It's Friday Night Football in Birmingham. We ain't doing no internet talking, no talking at all. We just gonna handle business. We gonna do all the talking after the game. The undefeated Carver Rams hoping to keep the momentum going as they face the Winona Dragons on the gridiron tonight. It's gonna be a game, we gonna finish it. It's not gonna be the way they want it to be finished. There's been a shift in the BCS coaches poll. Stick around to see what coaches and players are making big plays on the field. The pre-show starts right now. Live from Birmingham City Schools, you're watching DCS Honor the Lights, the pregame show. From Birmingham to the world, this is BCS Under the Lights. I'm your host, Steve Brown. We're here for the pregame show tonight, and we are looking forward to our broadcast here from Carver High School, where the Carver High School Rams will take on the Winona High School Dragons. Now to the big story. The undefeated Carver Rams are in revenge mode. The Rams lost by one point in a conference game against the Dragons last year. This year, the Rams plan to defeat the Dragons to keep their winning streak going. Right now, the Rams are one and zero in their region. We have the head football coach here at Carver High School. Coach, uh, how do you feel about uh, tonight's game and uh, what are you looking forward to? Tonight's game is gonna be a big time city battle between two cross-town rivals, um, a lot of energy. Kids know each other. Uh, kids been playing against each other since they were young kids, so they kind of already familiar with each other. We have Demetri Howard. You know, last year you all lost by one point against Winona. Uh, what are y'all gonna do to make sure that doesn't happen again? Uh, we gotta lock in as a team, make sure we stay disciplined, communicate, you know, just do everything we're supposed to do, everything we practice, gotta translate over to the game. We have Tamarcus Three. Uh, with uh, Carver High School. Tamarcus, tell me how do you feel about this big game tonight? Uh, I feel like this game gonna be a show. What made this team better than we know? Uh, speed, we really got a lot of athletes and we uh, coached up well. Discipline. Now the big three, Red Oaks, board <laughs> member Walt Wilson, and Superintendent Dr. Mark Sullivan. Guys, the simple question. Can Carver beat Winona tonight? Fred Oaks. It's going to be a revenge game. You can believe that. But I'm looking for a big game. Here's, the, here's going to be the spin on it. We have that quarterback over there, Anthony Young, with the Winona Dragons. However, he's got some guys he can throw the ball to, but I'm still leaning toward the Rams. Walt Williams, I'm sorry, homeboy. I was about to say Big Walt. Is that okay? <laughs> big Walt, Walt, let's talk about the Winona Dragons. You were right there with me last, last year. Not only was it a one-point loss, Winona came back from 22 points down in the second half. What do you see? Winona had a big comeback last year, led by quarterback Trey Young. Much improved offensive line for Winona. They're better defensively. It's a beautiful atmosphere, beautiful atmosphere here at Carver High School, but I'm predicting a Winona High School victory. Dr. Sullivan, we always got to have balance now. The Carver Rams are 3-0. What do you have to say about this game tonight? So I was there last year, and I saw the competition last year. And I tell you, Young was amazing. But I must say, I must say, I think it's going to be a really tight game. But I think Carver might squeak it out tonight. All right. You see, we got a lot of thinkers tonight. They think this. They think this. Uh, we don't know. <laughs> that's the bottom line. We really don't know. And the kids are going to play it out on the field. Let's head over to southwest Birmingham. The Dragons know the Rams are ready for revenge. The team has been practicing all week for tonight's game. And the Dragons say the big thing for them 
is to play as a team, to focus, and to play hard. We have uh, we know the head football coach Nicholas Howard. Uh, coach, are you ready for Carver tonight? Yes, we are, man. We we prepared, we worked hard, man, and um, we're ready for the kickoff. What is it that you know you all had to work on to be ready for the the big game tonight? Well, mostly, man. You know, Carver and we know is pretty much a rivalry of. You know, with the, the kids being, you know, knowing each other and stuff like that. So we just had to just be prepared mentally, you know, just mental toughness. So we have Anthony Young. Mr. Anthony, are you all ready for those Carver Rams? 3-0 and Carver Rams, that is. Yes, sir. I believe we're ready as a team and uh, as a group, we're ready. You had a whole week to get ready for this game. What is it that you all have been focusing on? Uh, I feel like we've been focusing on finishing um, a lot of physicality running hard on and off the field, and just playing hard, basically. Well, back to the big three. Sounds like Winona is very confident, Big Walt. Does your team, your team, as board member, <laughs> does your team have what it takes to win tonight? Absolutely. Hey, it's not just that I represent Winona on the Board of Education. I'm a former player at Winona High School. I'm a former coach at Winona High School. Anybody who knows Big Walt know the love I have for those mighty, mighty dragons out of Winona High School. I'm not taking anything away from this great football team that Carver has. They're undefeated. They're quick. They're fast. They're agile. But they just don't have enough to put out that dragon fire. Tonight. I hear you. Now, while we're with you, Big Walt, let's talk about one of the icons, one of the one of the one of the people in, in went on a football history that was just recently on a coach Ronald Cheatham. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Talk about what Coach Cheatham meant to the Winona program. He was the coach of Nick Howard and many others. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about Coach Cheatham and what he meant to the program uh, over uh, on Southwest Birmingham. Hey, thank you for asking that question. Ronald Cheatham came to Winona High School in 1989. He was there for 30 years. Wow. He had an impact not only on the players that he coached, man, but the entire Southwest community. He was well respected. He was a mentor. He was a dad to a lot of the young men that he coached, man. And he was a true example of what we need as mentors and coaches in our school system. Hey, man, he led the Dragons to two successful undefeated seasons during his tenure, uh, led him to a state championship game, and coached Cheatham turned out more college and NFL players than any coach in this high school system. I'm not just talking about Birmingham City Schools. I'm talking about the state of Alabama. You go down the litany of, uh, or the list of players that played for Coach Cheatham that as freshmen they were ready to play collegiate football at a very high level. Your brother, the great um, defensive back coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Grady Brown is one of them. He was there early in Coach Cheatham's career. We didn't talk about the Joe Webb who uh, went to UAB, man, and played with the Minnesota Vikings and the New York Jets. Let's not even forget about the great ones. We got two current Coach Cheatham players, two brothers playing on the New York Jets right now, Quentin and Quincy Williams, and they are balling. Those are Winona boys. That's what we teach. Excellence at Winona High School. Absolutely. Now, we'll be remiss if we did not look at these Carver Rams. Shake it up, Carver girls, because we're in Ram country. And, Brett, what is Carver going to have to do? I mean, we're talking about a team that's 3-0. and Coach Carson has done a yeoman's job turning this program around since he's been here. Now, you know that he has four starters that are returning. That's all he has returning. However, what he's done, like Coach was saying, they're fast. Now, if they get on the outside of you, it's a wrap. It's going to be a track meet. You're going to be reading the name on the back of a shirt. So those guys, so you have to keep them contained. You clearly have to keep them contained. So you have Carver, they're using their speed. I think Carver is going to be, uh, I'm giving them just a bit of an edge. However, we know not don't count them out. All right, I hear you, Bredo. Now, the pep rally was live this week. Before, before we go to break, <laughs> listen in to the mighty marching Rams and their cheerleaders as we show you some of the pep rally in some of our clips. Birmingham City School shines the lights on its student athletes live during the BCS Under the Lights Football Game of the Week broadcast. 
Some of the most talented students from Carver High School's TV Production Academy are behind the camera lens and are creating dynamic shots like Antonio Scott. Uh, Talk about the pressure that you were under as a camera, as a well, camera operator. It's, it's, it, it really is pressure because like you got to work on your camera angles, how to make sure you got the right angle for the right people. Like uh, Mr. Israel, he was uh, telling me how to move the camera from left to right, zoom in a wide shot and a tight shot. This is Mr. David Israel. He's the director of the BCS production truck and controls what shots you see during the live broadcast. Mr. Israel is also Scott's instructor at Carver. Well, our program has been moving at a speed that we really uh, couldn't have anticipated. Uh, I approached it from an angle of how many of y'all are actually interested in doing football. It's been great. It's been a great turnout. Rosa Santos is another student who works the sideline cameras. She has a love for photography and videography. I like the TV production um, classes because it's helped me to do my skills. I like to take pictures, um, videos. The students who are enrolled in the TV production academy have to take several beginners to advanced level classes. Those classes focus on key areas such as producing a television show, writing, production, and post-production. Student Trinity Scott is ahead of the game. She's already creating high-level graphics and has her own business. Now she can add a videographer and storyteller to her resume. So we're working on a project where we go around asking interviews, well, doing interviews, interviewing our football players, volleyball players, basketball players, and stuff like that. And the, so far, the project has been amazing. We want to make sure that we create the best opportunity for our students. Our whole goal is give them the, the latest advanced equipment, but also utilizing some of the old equipment. So these scholars will be versatile and career ready after high school. I'm Fred Davenport with BCS Media. Hello, I'm Tiki Hines, principal at George Washington Carver High School. You're watching BCS Under the Lights. Let's go Rams. Welcome back to BCS under the light, the pre-game show. You're looking live at Carver High School's awesome cheer squad behind you. And you see on the screen the awesome drum line. They are getting it in. All right, Reno. Let's get down to the get down. It's time for this week, BCS Coaches Poll. And I understand we've had some movement. Oh, do we have some movement? I don't know if Coach and everybody on the panel is going to be happy with this. But here you go. Hello, everyone. It's time for the Birmingham City Schools Football wow. Coaches Poll, better known as the BCS Top 5. In week number five, polls, we have a bit of controversy, or is it? In this week's polls, holding at number one spot is the Parker Thundering Herd at with 4-0 now. And, and, oh, and their 49 win last week over the Jackson, o, uh, Jackson Olin. In the number two slot, the Carver Rams at 3-0 and o with their impressive 26-14 uh, win over the Hayden Wildcats. Now, number three are the 2-1 and one Ramsey Rams who were on the road and rolled over the Jasper Vikings last week with double nickels to six. Jumping up to the number four position are the number two Two and one Winona Dragons, who fell 21 to 35 to the Pleasant Grove Spartans. Now holding on to the number five spot are the Woodlawn Colonels, who were idle last week, but will be back in action tonight against the Mountain Brook Spartans. Well, guys, did they get it right this week? And remember, there's no crying in football. My, so, my, my. <laughs> well, I Parker number one without question. Parker That's number without one. Without question, I, I, I have I, no debate with that. No Dr. debate. Sullivan, we'll no go with debate. This. Parker number one. I would be I'm kind of questioning that number for two and three spot. Oh. I, I, st <laughs> I still think the Rams and Rams are probably the second best team in the city, but I can I, th I think there's an argument that could be made for Carver. I absolutely. Give it up for the Carver Rams, number two, y'all. Three and <laughs> oh, undefeated. Give it up for the Rams, the home team tonight. Big Walt, what do you see? Carver, number two. The Rams and Rams, number three. No, I don't get to say this often, but I agree with Dr. Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we can't underestimate the defending state champion um, Rams and Rams. 
I think that they are right now, they're the number two team in the city behind that great team that Parker has over there. The rest of it is up for debate. It's yeah. going to it's gonna handle itself tonight out here on the field. Right. We're going to see what's going to happen with Carver and Winona. But I think Ramsey is the number two team in the city right now. Brett, the coaches have Winona at four. Again, they're going to get to sell something with, with Carver tonight. What are your thoughts hey, about that Hey, it's going to get settled down here on the field. That's where it's all going to get settled. These are all what we think. What we think, what we know, and then what's going to happen. That's where it's going to get settled. So, And polls say a lot. Polls mean a lot. But as you say, it has to get settled on the field. That's right. Now, Big Walt, you brought up something interesting. You, you're saying in your heart of hearts that the Rams are Rams are second. You know, but, but they're at three now. They, they, they have a difficult opponent tonight mm -hmm. against Pleasant Grove, mm -hmm. a regional opponent outside the city. What do you see happening in that game? Pleasant Grove is a strong football team. I believe if Ramsey stick to the game plan, if they're consistent at doing what they do best, if they play hard, they stay focused, I think Ramsey beats Pleasant Grove. Uh, Brett, All Parker, right. what do you see for them this week? Uh, they they are uh, on a roll. You know, How do you see them continuing on what they're doing? What, did you say Parker? Parker, yeah. Parker played last night. Now, Parker Give went over. Update. Yeah, they rolled over Mortimer Jordan last night. It was, it, it was it was. Not An outstanding close. game. Mm -hmm. You got to unbelieve. What was really standing out to me in that Parker game was their offensive line. Mm -hmm. They have some big guys on that line. Those are Division I guys. They're 6'5", 6 6'3", 6 over 230 pounds. And when I say they're, when they're pulling guards are pulling, they are coming like trucks. And they're smashing those defensive end and opening up those slots. Because nobody is moving, as Coach Well knows, mm -hmm. if those dudes up front aren't doing their job, the skill players aren't doing anything. There yeah. you go. So let's get into the why now. Let's look at the top five offenses. Here we one go. One of those things that contribute to who's really number one. Here we go. Now, no surprise this week, Parker stays at the top spot. The Rams of Ramsey climbed into the number two position with their offensive explosion over Jasper High School last week. And the Rams of Carver moved into number three after putting down the Wildcats of Hayden High School. Now, the Winona Dragons drop to the number four position after their loss to Pleasant Grove Spartans, and the Colonels of Woodlawn will remain in the number five position because they were idle. However, what do you guys think? Okay, here we go. Big Walt, we'll defer to you first. Statistically, I think they got it right. Right now, uh, Winona has to play better offensively. Uh, Carver's putting up great points. Parker is hands down one of the best teams in the state of Alabama. I'm going to predict them to win it all. Uh, they're solid offensive, decent defensively. As long as they stay consistent and stay focused, they're going to be in contention for a state title. Dr. Sullivan. I totally agree with, with Big Wall. Uh, they got it. They got it. Wow. <laughs> they got it. They got it. They got it right. They got that one right. They got. They got that one right. I totally agree, and I also agree that Parker is probably the best team in the state. Yeah. Right? Now, they were outstanding yesterday. Mortimer Jordan didn't have a shot from the beginning. I mean, they were totally dominated from the beginning. You have uh, Malik Muhammad, their quarterback, ran two touchdowns, one for a 75-yard run, one for a 64-yard uh, wow. run. And, 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 I mean, it was just a dominating offensive performance as well as defensive. They, those guys shut uh, 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 Mortimer Jordan down mm -hmm. last night. There was, there was no question about it. Coach, if you, you know when defense plays hard and you can't run it up the middle, there's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. Now, I can, I can speak to Ramsey. You know, I'm, I'm a Ramsey blue blood here now with no offense to anybody <laughs> else at the table. But, but I got to say, Ramsey is a Jekyll and Hyde offense. It depends on who's at quarterback, whether they are effective or not. Uh, so, so those coaches have a choice to make on where to go with, with that quarterback situation to see who's going to be prolific. Well, the other element, defense makes you who you are. So, Brett, let's go on the top defenses in the city of Birmingham. Well, here we go again, guys. The number one is the Parker Thundering Herd defensive tackle led by Jordan Crawford, who recovered a fumble and ran 25 yards for a Parker score. In the number two spot are the Ramsey Rams. Now the Carver Rams remain at number three. At number four are the Woodlawn Colonels. And rounding out the top five defensive list are the Winona Dragons. Coach, are you happy with that one? Um, right now, statistically, I, I, I agree with it, but it's disappointing for me to say that because Ramona is known for defense. It's been the pride of the school for decades. 
Uh, the kids made some mistakes, big mistakes, when they played Pleasant Grove last week. I think Coach Howard is going to get those mistakes corrected. I think you're going to see a strong performance, and I, I, plan, I really hope that poll changes over the next couple of weeks. You make a good point. Uh, our defense is a hallmark that we know in the high school. And so as we get ready to wrap up this segment of our pre-show, guys, it's, it's been great being here with the big three. I'm going to get ready to transition up to the booth so that we can uh, get ready for the main event, Brad. There you go. And uh, you're going to take this next segment and then join me up top. But as we go out, you hear the mighty Martin Carver Rams drum line getting it in, led by former Eagle Look student, my man Star, split of my students, but cheerleaders behind me feeling real good right now. Represent Eagle Look. We'll be back. This is BCS. I got the lights. We got the show. Y'all like that, don't you? I'm about to bang my face. We know that high school senior Jermichael Thornton is months away from joining the Birmingham Fire and Rescue Recruit Academy. He's taking advantage of his last year in the Fire Science Academy to perfect his skills. Why do you want to be a firefighter? I want to be a firefighter because I want to help others. Initially, Jermichael wanted to go to the military after high school, but he changed his mind after enrolling in this class. What is it you all were working on specifically that gave you that interest? Like, this is what I want to do. Honestly, quick dressing, um, putting on turn out gear, learning CPR. During Winona students' first year in this academy, they're learning career and interview-ready skills. From there, the students are learning the basics of firefighting and being in an emergency medical technician. It's basically all of the same stuff that's taught in recruit school, except they get it at a high school level. Once they've taken three of my courses here, they are what you call credential, meaning they have a fast track to the fire department. Now retired Birmingham firefighter Captain Harold Watson is the instructor of the Fire Science Academy. Talk about the feeling. You're inspiring children, giving them a path, you know, options. I really like that because um, some of the students, many of them, they choose to be in the course. But there's also quite a few of them that the counselors will just put in the course. And those students... Uh, provide me with the challenge of winning them over, if you want to say. And majority of the time, those students want to take my next course, and second course, and the third course, and many of them decide, hey, Cap, I think I want to be a firefighter now. Mariah Williams is another prime example. When I first joined this class, I wasn't really interested in it. Um, and it's the more hands-on and assignments we did and the competitions we did, I got more and more interested in it. The students participate in the Birmingham Fire and Rescue Service Department's High School Fire Science Competition. The Dragons actually scored big during the High School Fire Science Competition last May. I'm Fred Davenport with the BCS Media. I'm Dr. Willie Goldsmith, the principal of Winona High School, the bright star on the hill. You're watching BCS Under the Lights. Go Dragons! Welcome back to the BCS Under the Lights, the pregame show. We're looking live at the Carver High School talented cheerleaders. Now, these young, these young girls have put in a lot of hard work this summer to get ready for tonight's game. Fred Davenport shows us what new skills they've learned during cheer camp. It's their job to bring game day energy. Help create school pride and sometimes serve as ambassadors. The cheerleaders are the main show. Being a cheerleader comes with a lot of responsibilities. These girls and guys from several Birmingham middle and high schools received intense training this summer so they could execute their jobs with perfection during school events. I learned stunts, a new stunt technique. Um, I learned, uh, of course, cheers. You know, how to like a spirit well. Uh, team bonding, since we have a new team. We've learned to dance and sportsmanship and all about being excited and engaging with the crowd. Birmingham City Schools invested in its cheerleaders by seeking help from the Universal Cheerleaders Association. We have some great talent here at Birmingham City Schools and they're just helping us to bring that out in our girls. This is a great learning opportunity because we get to learn everything that what is all taught nationally. I've learned how to 
um, always show spirit and always be tight and always show spacious even when I don't feel like it. For some, this training and cheering overall helped them build confidence. It's like a getaway. It's like you show what you got. People ain't judging you based off who you are, but based off how well you do when you perform. These students are counting on the public to attend their school games so they can show off what they've learned during summer camp. I'm Fred Davenport with BCS Media. From the Academy of Engineering to the Health Science Academy, your child has choices here at Carver High School to succeed. Joining me live is the principal, Tiki Hines, here at Carver High School. Good evening. How are you doing? Good evening. Hey, yeah, principal, can you tell us, let's talk about the different programs and academies that Carver's offering. Well, Carver has the privilege of having the most academies here in Birmingham City. As you started off, we do have the um, Academy of Engineering, Health Science. We also have graphic arts and TV production. So our students have a number of different pathways and credentials that they can select, and they're excited about those selections. Well, fantastic on that. that and you're growing. A lot of people, why don't they know about these programs? I mean, these are great, phenomenal programs. we got to let the world know about those. So it is our job through social media, through um, going out and, and providing a marketing plan mm -hmm. that we go into the middle schools um, as well as the Metro Birmingham area and to share what we have here to offer here at Carver High School um, through internships, through field trips, through guest speakers. We are looking to provide students with an opportunity to know what pathways are available here at Carver High School. Okay, well, fantastic. Well, also, you guys have really blown up academically. We're looking at your graduation rate is up. Tell us about it. Absolutely. We worked really hard to make sure the class of 2023 earned 91% of those graduates met the requirements um, for the state of Alabama. And so we are excited about that 91% grad rate. And we are challenging our 2024 graduates to exceed those expectations. Wow, 91% graduation rate. You have to be super proud of that. I am, I am. The students, the staff, and the parents was uh, working hard to make sure we um, help those students meet that, that first mark. All right, well, thank you, Principal Jones. You got a prediction for tonight? I don't. I'm looking forward to a great competition, though. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Well, some like it hot. This week on Good Eats, our own Tommy Palladino visits Eugene's Hot Chicken, and he's feeling the heat. Located in Birmingham's Uptown District, Eugene's Hot Chicken has earned a reputation for serving up some of the best fried chicken in the Magic City. But this isn't Kentucky Fried Chicken. This is Nashville Hot Chicken a spicy recipe that makes buffalo wings seem tame in comparison. You can choose your own heat levels, starting at southern or no heat and escalating to stupid hot for the daring. And we're here at Eugene's Hot Chicken with the owner of the restaurant, Zebby Carney. Zebby, tell us about your, your menu. So we got a southern style menu that specializes in hot chicken. We got tenders, wings, uh, you can get a whole bird on our menu, a whole bunch of southern sides. Uh, you can get loaded chicken fries. Um, chicken egg rolls, a bunch of stuff we get on our menu. All right, all right. So uh, Nashville hot chicken, what, what sets that apart from other chicken? Traditionally, it's just southern fried chicken, and we infuse it with uh, with some hot spices. Nice. So it gives a, a total different flavor. Right. I do like some spice. So you yeah. got the, the stupid hot wings for me, or the tenders here for me. I guess I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah, you got stupid hot tenders. They're not that bad, but it lingers. Is it getting hot in here? Yeah, that's it's getting hot in here. That's good stuff. <laughs> Give it a minute. Give it a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a minute. Get a little kick. Woo! All right. Well, now we're gonna get some water. It's been a great week for Carver Ladies Rams volleyball. The Lady Rams beat Fulton Dale and Center Point High School's volleyball teams as well. Joining us now, live are a member of the Carver Rams volleyball team. Head coach Meg Rogers, players Makia Givens, Trinity Scott, and Jamisha Smith. Did I say that right? It's Jason. Smith. Okay, okay. <laughs> Good to have you guys here. Let's tell us what's leading to the success of the team, coach. I feel like this year we did a great job holding each other accountable and just making sure 
we do what needs to be done on and off the court. What have you guys have done differently this year off season to help build that success? This year we had a strength and conditioning coach. So we started um, in January working out, lifting weights this season, and we went on a good diet this year. That plays a, uh, ladies, did you see a difference with the weights and everything that you? Uh, yes, we did. We, we feel like that really helped us on the court with our endurance and how we play. Okay, coach, are you starting to get younger players to get involved with the volleyball? Yes, this yes this year we had a JV program. Um, I think it hasn't been done in the last maybe two two years. So this year we had a JV and um, we're full of freshmen on the JV. So we have a total of 25 girls playing volleyball here at Carver High School. That's phenomenal. How important is, are, is that feeder development for the JV? It's very important. Um, it's helped with uh, development of the kids. I have four seniors that's graduating this year, and so the JV girls will eventually move up next year and help with the program and continue the success of this program. Well, girls, ladies, would you like to continue to play college volleyball, move to the next level? As of right now, I'm undecided, but if I find out that what's for me, then that's what I'm going to do. Uh, as of right now, I don't know that I'm planning to. I want to. You want to? <laughs> Well, fantastic. Well, you guys have been doing a great job on that. So now, well, that'll do it for this episode of BCS Under the Lights show, pre-show edition. The main show starts right now. Under the light. From Birmingham to the world, this is BCS Under the Night. I'm your host, Steve Brown, here at Carver High School, George Washington Carver High School, Birmingham, Alabama, as the Carver Rams host the visiting Winona Dragons in a key game here tonight. From Birmingham to the world, this is BCS Under the Lights. I'm your host, Steve Brown, coming to you from George Washington Carver High School, Birmingham, Alabama, as the Carver High School Rams host the visiting Winona High School Dragons in tonight's BCS Under the Lights game. This is our first Friday night edition of BCS Under the Lights. And right now I have our superintendent, Dr. Mark Sullivan, in the booth with me. Dr. Sullivan, how are you doing tonight? I am well tonight, uh, uh, Steve, very well tonight. I just want to, before we get started, I just want to uh, send out uh, prayers to our students who were in a bus accident today. I uh, went to go visit them in the hospital. All seem to be uh, recovering well. No life-threatening injuries. A lot of bumps, a lot of bruises, a lot of scrapes. But our prayers go out to those individuals as well as our teacher who was injured in that crash today. Absolutely, Dr. Sullivan. And, and we hope that everyone echoes our sentiments. And certainly we know that you do. Uh, we have so many students. We have multiple uh, buses that are moving about. And, and certainly, you know, these things happen and we're glad for the response uh, and that everybody was, was safe as a result of that. Also, Dr. Sullivan, on another uh, somber and serious note, we would be remiss if we did not acknowledge that 60 years ago today, yeah. there were five children who were murdered in this Birmingham metro area due to senseless, violent, brutality acts that were inspired by racism and prejudice. Four little girls lost their lives at 16th Street Baptist Church while preparing for worship by a bombing. 
And then later that evening, a young man was shot while riding his bicycle with his brother after church. So, you know, let's just have a moment of silence at this time in recognition of the five Birmingham children who just 60 years ago lost their lives in a senseless act motivated by racism. Absolutely, absolutely, Ms. Brown. Very appropriate time for us to recognize our country, the United States of America. Before our national anthem, we were just paying homage to the five children who were murdered in a very senseless act 60 years ago today. Uh, Addie Mae Collins, Denise McNair, Carol Robertson, and Cynthia Wesley were the four girls. Yeah. Virgil Ware was the young man riding his bike with his brother yeah. and was shot. It's, it's interesting that the, the girls were killed by a bombing that morning by adults. And later that afternoon, Virgil Ware was murdered by children. Wow. Ever so important, the example we set, the tone we set. And you know, I, I dare say, Dr. Sullivan, this is what was dreaded. <laughs> but yet, we are alive. Yeah. Alive. And the Birmingham City Schools is thriving. It's thriving under your leadership, under the leadership of board members like Big Walt Williams, who uh, we had a chance to uh, share time with during our pregame. And we're just ever so thankful because, I mean, that was, that was all about BCS excellence because it was the Birmingham City School students that walked out of Parker, that walked out of Western Nolan, that walked out of Lincoln School, right. that, that, that protested, that, that caused all that consternation that has changed this United States Change and the world, the world. forever. Change Dr. Sullivan, talk about it for a minute. Your, your students, your legacy. Changed the world. And, you know, one of the things that's very powerful as you know, that many of those individual students went on to teach in the Birmingham school system, went on to be administrators of the Birmingham school system. I'm thinking about some people like Janice Kelsey, you know, who who, uh, who was principal at Dupuy Elementary School. And these were members of the uh, Children's March who really changed, like you said, changed this country and changed the world and really set the stage for what you're seeing now 
with BCX Excellence and Excellence Among Our Students. So I'm just really proud to have, to be a part of that legacy in some way, you know, being superintendent of the school system, but knowing that we are standing on the shoulders of so many who have sacrificed so much and we have so much responsibility because of that. Absolutely. So let's get down to the get down. Let's get down to some football. Tonight we are coming to you live from Carver High School, and we have a game tonight that you want to tune in, sit down, and be ready to enjoy. And that is this game right here between the Carver Rams and the Winona High School Dragons. We talked about it a little bit in pregame. Guys, we have a matchup that's a revenge game because of the, 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 the matchup last year and how it turned out. One point, come from behind victory. Let's go to our video and check out what our players have to say. What's up, everybody? This is Mayor Randall Wood, and you are watching BCS Under the Lights. We're back here at BCS Under the Lights. You're looking at the coin toss at midfield as we're back to live action tonight again, coming from Carver High School, home of the undefeated Rams, who are currently 3-0, as they take on the 2-0 win on the Dragons. It should be a good one tonight, Brett. Keep your eyes on that coin flip so you can let us know how it goes. As the ref has to do it again. He had a fumble on his first attempt. <laughs> Let's that, talk a little is that bit. how the night's going to go? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the, the uh, we know the Dragons. The, the Dragons uh, have, have done a great job this year so far, 2-1, and one, and they've had some players in the past who've done some great things to represent Winona. Okay, well, you know, Joe Webb is one, you know, who played at UAB, 
and was drafted by the Minnesota Vikings. Now, he went on to play, and he had an 11-year career in the NFL, and of course, the Williams brothers, Quincy and Quinnen, who are making their mark for the New York Jets, especially with that overtime win Monday night, uh, on Monday Night Football. Absolutely, that was a great game, Monday Night Football, last week. As we see the results of the uh, coin flip, uh, Winona has chosen to receive the ball, uh, and they will get it in the first half as they prepare to run out. Carver runs over to their home tent, get ready to run out. It was very close to kickoff, but yeah, uh, Brett, Joe Webb, definitely uh, a name you want to mention when you start talking about we know the football greats. Uh, outstanding job of Winona, Winona uh, UAB. It was a phenomenal quarterback there and had several successful years in the NFL. Uh, Joe Webb, you see his picture there. Uh, the phenomenal, multi-talented guy was a, did a little bit kick returning in the NFL in addition to playing quarterback and being quite effective. And certainly you mentioned Quincy and Quentin Williams, the brothers from Winona, who are both playing with the Jets, both doing a great job. I, I mean, how many times has that happened? Not only having brothers uh, to make it to the NFL, but brothers playing on the same team. So kudos to them yeah. as well. Uh, a couple other players we got to mention, Leon Day, uh, one of my guys. Leon Day is now the current head coach at Selma High School in his first year. My man Leon Day uh, played uh, with a guy named Eric Mitchell Jackson. Uh, they had a phenomenal team under Coach Cheatham. Eric is coaching over in Atlanta, but yeah, Leon Day was their quarterback, went on to Tuskegee, played ball there, and then I would be remiss if I didn't mention my brother, uh, Grady Brown. Grady is defensive back coach, Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, Grady played and went on to high school under Coach Cheatham, went on to play at Alabama and m University and has worked his way up, uh, coaching in SWAC, coaching in the uh, SEC, and now he's uh, with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, coaching up there with Coach Thomas. So as we get back to the action here at Carver High School, you hear the home team running onto the field. We'll talk more about these guys and other other greats from both schools later. But yeah, it's time to see what the next generation of greatness is all about, Brett. Yeah, uh, that's you know you have an impressive crop of homegrown talent. You know indeed. You know now this year's. Dragons are under the leadership of Coach Nicholas Howard and led by six foot one, 170 pound senior cornerback, the phenomenal Anthony Young, who already has been honored as a Fox Six Sideline Player of the Week. And in his first week of high school action, Young had 183 yards receiving, 119 rushing yards, and three tackles and three TDs. Outstanding. As we get ready for the kickoff, Carver versus Winona. And there have been some studs to come out of Carver now. Carver Absolutely. has not had a, a, a real story uh, football history, but in 19, uh, I think it was 81, they had an undefeated team that made it all the way to the state finals only to lose in a close game. I believe it was to Vestavia or someone like that. I looked that up, Brett, to, to, to be clear about it. But, but Carver has some good guys, uh, Demetrius Cotry, um, uh, Jeremiah Cotry, who went, his, his nephew ended up going to Phillips, made it to the NFL okay. as a receiver. Uh, but, but Carver's really known for football, but we're gonna, they're going to make themselves known tonight, I believe, Brett, for football. And here we go with our kickoff. Short kickoff, taken at the 30-yard line. Grabbed and pulled, and he goes down. Looks like Brad at the 43, where we know that we'll put it into play. Yeah, that was uh, received by number three, uh, Joshua Grant, the six-foot, 190-pound senior linebacker who made that uh, return. And a big shout-out to, to our guy, Robert Bradford, who can't be here with us tonight. Oh, Robert. Robert, our thoughts are with you, man, and, and he couldn't be here for yeah. uh, things beyond his control. But, hey, you're the guy, man. Peace out, Robert. I know you're watching, and uh, we love you guys. We know gets ready to put it into play with Trey Young, the third, calling the signals back there for Nick Young. They had around the right side. Breaks two tackles. Oh, my goodness, and he gains about – 18 yards on that rush, number 17 for the Dragons. Dominic Bruce, the 5'6", 156-pound senior running back. And he also plays cornerback, but you saw how he broke outside. You know, that line really uh, gave him that lane, and he was able to do his thing. That we know the offense is in the hurry-up. 
uh, going straight to the line, getting ready for the next play. Handoff up the middle again. Powell pushes him back. Now, Brett, we know forward progress is going to be what it, it is. So why allow the scrum to, you know, keep rolling back and get somebody hurt? I get uh, concerned about I'm, that. I'm with you on that. Blow the whistle. It's 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 done play. You're going to keep guys from getting hurt up there. You know, those guys, those are some big guys out there. So. Great gain of, of about five yards on the play. Look like uh, we got some issues with the stick man over there on the other side. Was ready to move, <laughs> but the but the umpire quickly put him back. Nick hands it off. Not Nick, but Trey hands it off inside for no gain. Actually, they lose two on this second down play. It's going to bring up about third and, and eight for the Dragons. Yeah, you saw what the defense was all over top, all on top of that one on that play. They re they sniffed that one out pretty quickly. The win on the offense, though, looking good. Uh, Coach Howard, Nick Howard, another former player, student of Coach Cheatham, played with my brother Grady, played with Leon, played, played with Eric, Eric Jackson. Uh, great, great squad they had. Great young men, all doing well. Young back to pass. He's looking. He throws it to the sideline, high and out of bounds. Uh, he was going for it to Marcus three, you know, number uh, number one over there. Three has such a interesting uh, uh, story on on himself. You know that he was uh, he, when I talked to uh, Coach Car uh, Carson earlier this week. He said he was no surprise to him. You know, he thinks that this kid is really on some other level, and, and a lot of people will be talking to him. Fourth down for the Dragons as the Carver defense seeks to bone up right here. Carver, the red, white, and blue Rams all in black tonight. Black uniforms, black helmet. They want to have a black dog defense right here. Young back to pass. He's looking. He's thinking about running. He throws in high again over his receiver. But well, we got a flag on the play. Flag on the play. You can see he was trying to target three uh, uh, once again, number one. But uh, but he was very frustrated. He says, I'm open. Let me get it, man. I'm on the sideline. Toss it to me. Just, just toss it in there with a little touch. And that's the penalty was against Winona, so that's declined. And Parker, I mean, I'm sorry, Carver, excuse me, Rams, <laughs> will take over on downs. Yeah, that was a, uh, on that series. I thought they were going to do a little something on that after they broke out with that nice run in the beginning. But the uh, uh, Winona Dragons, uh, uh, Definitely said, uh, I mean, the Carver Rams definitely shut that down. Their defense were stepped up to it on that first series. And we want to we remind everybody that viewers can watch our game coverage if you're passing it along. Three formats, NFHS Network, the Birmingham City Schools YouTube page, and livestream.com BCS. Carver with their first play. Quarterback run. Oh, and he oh. is stuffed. He is met by a dragon coming off that edge for a loss of two yards. Yeah, David Smiley came up from that linebacker position and put the helmet on. He did, Brett. Carver in a hurry up offense. Looking to the sideline to get the final play call. Trips to the right. Throws over to the flat to the left. Good blocking. And they close in on him, but they can't wrap him up. He's able to gain about six yards. Demarcus Johnson, do you see how he was scrambling on that? Demarcus uh, Johnson, now he's the senior, six foot four, 185 pound wide receiver. Kept his legs driving and gained about six yards to make it now a third and six for the Rams. Trips left. Now the third receiver goes back to be offset right of the quarterback who's in the shotgun. Twins right. Nine minutes and one second to go in the first quarter. Back to pass into the flat. High, but brought in by the receiver for Carver. That's number two, uh, Demetri Howard, with nice fingertip catch there and getting his toes down, Brett, to stay in bounds. Yeah, the uh, number two, yeah, he stayed in there. Tiptoe. Nice. Twins right. H back on the right side, single receiver left with the running back offset to the left of the quarterback. Yeah, I thought that was a nice throw by the quarterback by Carver, uh, Najee Hicks. He got set and was able to get that out of there and hit his target. Motion man, low snap though, messes up the play, looks like, but you had penetration. 
which leads to a sack of the quarterback. Loss of about five yards, Brett, makes it second and 15 for the Rams. Yeah, Dwayne Harris, the third, number 15, gets in there quickly and trips him up. Carver on the line, ready to go. Twins left, twins right. Quarterback is back to pass. He drops it in to number two, who is caught by the shoulder pass and horse call it down. That is a certain penalty. Only was a four-yard game, but they're going to tack on 15. Yeah, uh, Dimitri uh, Howard uh, makes that. He brings it in. But, yeah, that, that horse collar can hurt somebody. Really uh, can. The Carver offense, I got to give Coach Carson his kudos uh, that it looks good. Now, I'm going to tell you why, Brett. Uh, you probably know Ron Ziegler down there. Coach Zig is the offensive coordinator Carver this year. Oh, yeah, he's going to call it, man. <laughs> he's going to call it. He's going to open it up. Exactly, and he's going to coach the kids up to execute that which he's bringing to the table. Carver looking real good offensively here. Quarterback back to pass. He finds some older, but he's sacked. That pocket c collapsed on him. That's number three. You got Dimitri. Dimitri Howard again in on that play, man. He's moving all over the place tonight. Calling his name, and he's making plays. Second down and 12 for the Rams. Now, uh, Cameron Peterson, he's, he's dropping. He's trying to move, but uh, he was just, you know, he was just swarmed. He had nowhere to go on that one. Back to pass. He hits his receiver over there on the right side for a short game. Uh, good gain, and he gets the first down for the Rams. Nice job. Good throw to number one, DeMar DeMarcus Johnson, the 6'4", 164-pound uh, senior wide receiver. They look pretty good on their, their, their uh, uh, passing game pretty much this, in this start of the game. They are quite effective with moving it down the field. As the ball is positioned now at the 27-yard line, 26-yard line. Nice inside, look like a little bubble screen, and it goes nowhere. He, he didn't loses about three that. yards. Brings up second and 13 for the Rams from the win on a 30-yard line here at BCS under the lights from George Washington Carver High School. Six minutes and 51 seconds and counting remaining in the first quarter. This is looking at the setup here. You're watching these guys. They're really being very methodical on how they're setting up their offense and getting ready to start. Absolutely. Sign of a great coach in there. Again, Coach Ziggs' presence being felt. Pass out here to the flat. He catches it. Gains about five to bring up third and ten. Yeah, Erskine Graham. Gains about 11. four yards. The 11th grader. Pretty clean so good. far, too, other than the yeah. horse collar. And uh, you had the holding that wasn't called. Nice clean game by both offenses. Yeah, that shows good discipline and good discipline on with the coaches, on what they're teaching their guys on how to play the game. But they have coaching staffs on both sides of the field. Twins left and right, running back offset to the left of the quarterback. He's back to pass. They call a screen. Nicely called. One man, and he makes the tackle. Good play by the Winona defender to stop. To Marcus Street. The advancement to bring up about a fourth and six, five and a half maybe, from the Winona 23 and a half yard line. Key play in the first half. Let's see what happens, Brett. Fourth down. And we got a timeout on the field. Carver is calling timeout. This is BCS under the lights. Five minutes and 51 seconds remaining in the first quarter. This timeout is sponsored by AFT, the American Federation of Teachers, one of our great and fine sponsors who we love so much. Thank you, AFT, for all you do to support teachers, to support support, support personnel, and mainly to support students through your efforts. The AFT, the American Federation of Teachers. Also, another one of our great sponsors, 
James W. Brown, AFLAC agency. Uh, definitely want to give him a call for your supplemental insurance to help pay out-of-pocket expenses. We'll have James graphic up a little later. We just want to get those names out there as well as AEA as you get a look at our, some of our fans here. That's Coach Calhoun there. Uh, a worker and a fan, a BCS employee, as we look down at the field for live action. Back to our live action, Brett. Critical yeah. fourth down. Critical. What are they going to do? You're going to, you're going to go ahead. Officials discussing, making sure they have it together. That's right. Get it right. That's what the officials want to do. Get it right. Absolutely. Here we go. The time I was called by. Carver uh, and they run a uh, screen that was thwarted. Yeah, we mentioned that Carver had called that time out and uh, it didn't do much for them though. Now, number um, three, Jordan Grant. So fourth that down right and a turnover on downs. Ball goes to the Winona Dragons. So the Dragons bone up in the red zone. The Rams boned up in the red zone. Setting up for a nice little defensive game here. Yeah, yeah. These guys are moving around. They're flying around very, very well. So you're going to see, is this going to end up being a defensive game when we thought it might be more of an offensive game? And, and, and what could be worse than to the, than the use your timeout and, and, and it be ineffective, Brett? As a coach, I used to hate that. I, yeah. <laughs> you know, I used to hang my hat on out of the timeout as a basketball coach. I'm getting a score. I yeah, would right. love my time out under the basket and draw up my play, you know? Right, right. Winona puts it into play, Trey Young in the shotgun inside. No, fake the handoff. Now Trey putting his legs to work. Takes it, gets out of bounds after a gain of five. Second and five for the drag. Nice job trying to get outside, but that was sniffed out. I'm, I'm impressed by how quickly that the uh, Carver Rams defense, they're moving from side to side. Those big guys are moving fairly quickly. So if you're going to get to your spot, you're going to have to get there and make your cut. You've got to put your foot in the ground and turn up field. So key, so important. Second and five for the Dra Dragons. Nick Young hands off up the middle, and it is stuffed in the middle. And there we go. Uh, again, big guys up front just ready to play. A gain of one, bringing up a third and about five. You had that? Going on uh, number 53, if I remember, if I saw that number 52. And Brett, I'm already impressed with both of these teams, man. And what I love is I've seen the growth in both of these programs. You know, uh, uh, Winona and Carver have grown, man, by leaps over the last couple of years under the leadership of Coach Howard and Coach Carson. Young back to pass. He throws it out, and it's on his hands this time. Nice catch by three. And that's a first down for the Dragons. Yeah, three brings it in. Nice target. He's a nice big target. He is. You saw how he came downfield, turned, made his cut, and those two are on the same game page where you saw Young make a good, solid throw right into his hands. I like how three just grabs the ball, tucks, and turns to try to make that those yards right after the catch. Yeah, had a chance to set his feet and, uh, and really make a good, solid throw there. Brings up a first down for the Dragons, combination young to three. Hand off of the middle, stuffed by the Rams, stout. Defensive line, and we got oh, here we go. Oh. oh my goodness, we got a penalty, we got a fight, we've got a helmet off. Oh yeah, yeah, come on, there's no, there's no room for this, guys. There's no room for this. We saw now, somebody, uh, you know, two players got into it. I like the passion. However, guys, we have to keep that under control. But now, who was that, eight and that. nine that were engaged? Yes, number eight, Najee Hicks and Cameron uh, Peterson. So Hicks, from what I saw, was, was much the victim on the bottom of that pile. Yeah. I didn't see what happened before. The officials are discussing it, but certainly uh, something – that has marred what so far has been a great first quarter of play. I think I saw a, a punch. So it may be that somebody uh, on that yeah. Winona side may have to sit out the rest of this game. Yeah, I think that that's what they're discussing out there right now is that if this player, or if one or both, will be ejected from this game. And it's a shame that for a game of this caliber that we start off 
with this. The officials will certainly get it right. You know that, Brett, this is a competitive sport, man. Yeah. And, and, and we push each other. Coaches push their players to the edge. They push themselves to the edge, and sometimes these, these things happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, guys, you know, we're not, I'm not making light of anything or, or, or making excuses for them, but it is a passionate game. You're very passionate, particularly with these two rivals. This is a rival game for them. This is a, a payback game from last week, I mean, last year. So you're seeing these guys, they're, they're, they're revved up uh, until things settle down a little bit. Uh, you, you know, unfortunately, we had this right at the uh, beginning of the game, not at the actual beginning of the game. But we have it, you know, in this first quarter. Uh, again, we just can't have this. Now, we were talking about both these coaches being able to build solid programs. Uh, Nick Howard, Winona, uh, Coach Carson at Carver. You know, I want to say, you know, Coach Nick took over a program. I think Winona had a one-win season before he got there, went through a couple of years of struggling as he, were early, he was early in his career. And he's brought this program to a point that we see now that they're very competitive. They are a great offensive team. Uh, as, Co as, as Big Walt mentioned, defense has always been a part of, of who Winona is, and, and Coach Howard has done a great job. Conversely, on the Carver side, you know, Coach Carson comes from a situation where neither of the two feeder programs to his school, Ingle Nook, my, mm -hmm. my school, nor Hudson, have football programs. And we have been trying for for a number of years to craft a situation that would be amenable to maybe combine teams or mm -hmm. to do something yeah. to get guys on the field. Now, this year, my seventh and eighth grade guys are, are are up there with Carver playing B team ball. You know that was the best that we could do this year. Okay. But these guys are doing doing great with what they've been given. Well, that is so important to have those feeder schools, and have those kids come into pretty much the school where they're going to attend. They learn the program, they learn the coaches, they learn what what's going on up there. So they they get the uh, technical and they get. The, the early uh, experience of, you know, how they're going to play the game. This is, I think, feeder schools into your – the feeder school system is extremely important for these younger kids to learn technique, to learn the game, to learn to get experience from experienced coaches – they get to see and learn who the coaches are. They get to learn what the program is about. Uh, they get around guys that they're going to be coming around, be not only just on the field, but what kind of, uh, of, of, of guys are going to be at school, you know, when it comes to school and everything. Absolutely, Brett. Looks like uh, personal foul, both teams. And I believe I saw a gesture towards ejection. I believe that uh, eight and nine were sat down. I believe I saw a gesture on the Carver sideline toward eight. We'll see. But we get back to what matters most, live action. Second and eight, we know the under center now. Uh, Young hands it off and a short game that Carver defense is swarming. Real stout on that front line, uh, Brett. But Winona was able to gain maybe about three or four to bring up a third down. Yeah, nice job by number 17, Dominic Bruce again. He's doing a good job. Right off tackle. You saw how they're, they're starting to mix it up, starting to try to loosen up uh, that uh, uh, Carver defense. So huge third down here for the Dragons from their own 42. Young under center. Little movement, handoff up the middle, and stop for only about a two-yard gain. So it's going to be fourth and about five Dragons at their own 43-yard line. Do you punt or do you go, Brett? Do you take a chance here? Uh, right now where they are on the field, I don't think you take that chance. Let's bring out the uh, punt unit and let's start playing strategically where we can place that ball and maybe hopefully uh, – put Carver in a deep hole. But I, they're I not. 
I agree. The, the conventional wisdom would be flip the field, and you almost at midfield. So Coach Young says, hey, we're going to take a chance. Bad snap, but it's picked up by the running back who's determined. He was determined, Brett, and I believe he made it. It's dependent on the spot. Does three get there? He took one heck of a shot. Watch how he flips. He almost does a, a cartwheel after he gets hit there. But he is uh, number 17, Dominic Bruce. Man, yeah. it, it was an errant snap. Young was not ready. It, he bobbled it. It went to Bruce. Yes. And Bruce was determined. He, <laughs> he, would, he would not be denied. As I we think used it to actually say. froze the defense that they probably lacked, thought it was a fumble. Absolutely. First and 10 for the Dragons. The, the gamble plays off of Coach Howard over here in the flat. Completed. Nice move. Oh, but he is stuck. That's Omar Holscomb, the 5'9", 175 senior uh, wide receiver, makes that catch. And he was met by Jacoby Smith, man, and, and a couple of others. But Jacoby Smith laid the wood. Yeah, he did. He came with it. He's, he's like, you may have caught that, but now you're going to catch this. Second and five for the Dragons. Young moving mid nifty wow, nice in move. traffic. Nice move, Anthony Young. He moves so smooth uh, the way he runs. He has a nice smooth move going over uh, the tackle. He was able to break. He, I like how he puts his foot in the ground and he, he then he accelerates. So First he was down. patient. Absolutely, he, he he read the hole and he ran through it wonderfully. First and ten for the Dragons. Young goes back to the shotgun. Running backs offset left and right. Single receiver to the left. Handoff going left. Trying to turn the corner is Bruce. Puts his hand down. Almost got away. Bruce is an elusive running back, man. Yes. He does not go down easily. Yes, he is for a guy of his stature. He is a hard runner. He's very quick. Uh, and he's going to, when you hit him, it's going to take a blow. You're going to take a block. Brent, I really like what I'm seeing from both of these offenses. I mean, they, they are efficient. They're making good plays. They're disciplined. We know that and Carver are much improved teams than they were a year ago. Oh, yeah. You're looking at how clean the game is. You don't see any offsides. You're not seeing anybody jumping. It, it, it's a very well-run run, uh, uh, game so far. Play action, and he passes. Oh, little high. Just off the fingertips, and that was number nine for the Dragons. Obviously, he was not ejected. Good for him, and I see number eight running in for Carver, so he wasn't ejected. Uh, Warner, so they got a little grace on, on that little little fracas down there, Brett. Yeah. That's a good thing. Give him oh, a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These and, are high school Let's correct guys. it. Let's right. correct it. These are high on. school guys that got a little emotional. Now they've settled down, and now they're going to go ahead and play a uh, uh, ball. That ball was going for uh, Cameron Peterson. That was just thrown out of his reach. Third and nine for the Dragons. Trips right. Two of them stacked. Three out here wide, now in motion, bringing it back to a stack trip. He's looking. Three sits down on his route. Nick is, I mean, not Nick, but Trey was pulled down from behind. Uh, you know, the receivers, Brett, really didn't help Trey Young right there. No, they didn't. They didn't come back to the ball. You saw that he was under duress, but at some point, you kind of say, what can you do? You know, that was uh, Michael Three, who was uh, pulling down Anthony uh, Young uh, by the uh, uh, Carver Rams, uh, who was putting on that pursuit and had him had a handful of shirts. He did, he did. Had, had they uh, had those receivers come back, something better could have happened on that play. Subbing in uh, for the Rams, I believe, is, uh, yeah, my guy Emmanuel Starks, an Inglenook kid, uh, getting in there. We saw his brother down there on that drum line uh, from that Starks family, uh, Inglenook Carver line. And we got a timeout here sponsored by Aflac, uh, James W. Brown, sales consultant, district sales for Aflac. And uh, this timeout was called by Carver with, one, with 43 seconds remaining in the first quarter, Brett. We have a game here. Looks like this is going to be another outstanding game between the Rams 
and the Dragons. Yeah. We're looking for these guys to start probably things start to spread out a little bit. Now, you know, they've been tight. Now they're starting to spread out. A production of Birmingham City Schools. Keep it locked. Yeah. From Birmingham to the world. Another big fourth down here for the Winona Dragons. Just inside Carver territory. Man in motion. Young back to pass. Looking. He's protected. Rolling out. Protection breakdown. He throws it up. Receiver goes up incomplete. No flags on the play. No, I thought I saw some laundry out about the uh, 40. Uh, looks like there's going to be a call. I believe it's going as they discuss. I believe it's you did, Brett. Elite yeah. procedure, though, against the Dragons. Another fourth down penalty for the Dragons. Their second that's going to be declined by the Rams. And the Rams will take over at their own 42-yard line. Nice job by those guys out there. Uh, I saw that that laundry come in a little late over there. Uh, I thought it came in a little late because I thought these guys had already uh, started the play. But if they saw something, you know, the referees want to get it right. We want them to get it right. Brett was saying bend but don't break defense. Yeah. They're giving up yards in the middle. But, but when it's time to bone up, both of these defense are standing up saying no. With 34 seconds remaining in the first, Carver puts it in play, play action into the flat. We got a big play possible here, and he's off. He's putting on speed. He's going. Oh. He's going. Oh. He is gone. Touchdown, Carver. He gets to the house. Number two for the Carver Rams, Demetri Howard. Boy, he puts on that speed. He they did the little dump pass. He cuts up into, like he was coming back into the uh, 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 the middle of the field, and he goes, gets on his horse, and he's out of here. Yeah, what did we, I tell you? We talked to that young man before the game. You see a quick look at the replay here. That kid has speed, and, and they set it up so beautifully. Yeah. Off the play action, and then dumped it into the flat, which gave him enough room to scoop, skirt, and from there, man, it was speed, and he was <laughs> going. Hey, what did I tell you? Once these guys start getting, they have speed, you're going to start reading the back of a jersey. Absolutely. You said it, Brett, and now we have our extra point. We've got a timeout called by Carver. Looks like they were considering maybe a two-point conversion here, uh, but this extra point will be sponsored by AFT, the American Federation of teachers, as well as James W. Brown Aflac Agency. Brett, my goodness, man. Did you see that play? That was very well drawn up. They executed that play uh, just beautifully. I, I, I tell you, uh, Dimitri Howard, man, he put on those jets, man. He he was gone. He it did, was, man. That, that was beautifully designed and very well executed by the Carver High School offense. I mean, Man, the QB gave such a beautiful fake, you know, on yes, that dive. Yes. And then he pulled it out and dumped it over, man, and, and, and his boy did the rest. Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful thing when coaches draw something up and you see it materialize. Absolutely, man. Great play. Uh, great execution by the Carver offense. What's up, everybody? This is Mary Randall Woodman, and you are watching BCS Under the Lights a production of Birmingham City Schools. Keep it locked. Wow, that's right. Keep it locked because it's going to be some action. Absolutely it is. And here we go with a big two-point conversion attempt by the Rams. Quarterback in the shotgun. He's looking to pass. They open up the middle. He's going to try to run, and we know the stops it. They crush it. It closed. So the Dragons get a victory out of that situation. The score is now 6-0. to zero. Yeah. Carver with the lead, Winona, I'm sure, encouraged by that stop. Oh, absolutely. Najee Hicks, was. Uh, he pulled it back. He thought he was going to get outside, but uh, the, uh, 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 the Winona Dragons defense sniffed it out and shut it down. So here we are at George Washington Carver High School on the beautiful campus. You know, Brett, I don't know if you were living in Birmingham at the time, but, you know, Carver was one of the first – New schools constructed 
in Birmingham and oh man, probably some 50 years maybe. Wow. But but yeah, this was the first one. Uh, Dr. Johnny Brown was the superintendent and, and, and the, the school board, I believe, along with the city because there had to be some land swap because there actually uh, was, a, was a golf course up in this area. And it was, it was right, quite I do remember that. Quite yeah. yeah. controversial because, because that golf course had, had, had to be done away with. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but, yeah, this was one of the first new modern schools. And, and, and I remember Dr. Brown talking about it being positioned right off the interstate, so mm -hmm. it would really be a landmark to see, you know, from, from the interstate. Yeah. And uh, it really was a precursor to what we see now, whereas all of our high schools, really with the exception of Ramsey and Woodlawn, are new buildings, and even they have been retrofitted. Oh, yeah. These, uh, when you ride, drive by here, you know, headed up to uh, Huntsville, and you, you definitely see here. And I use it as a, a landmark when people are coming into town. I'm okay. like, you'll see George Washington Carver, and it'll be there and you'll see it and people oh there it is that's right kickoff is underway nice kick takes him back just inside the 20 but it was fielded and he is galloping that young man is galloping and he's met at the 30 by a horde of rams that take him down yeah that was a nice little grab that could have turned into something uh either way because i thought it was going to get a little more uh, uh Oh, that's okay. He was uh, going to get a little bit more uh, yardage out of that. But the Rams, they are really swarming. I like how they, you can see they're so disciplined on their team. I like how they swarm even on their special team. I do, man. I, I, re I mean, I'm just, I'm just getting it. Can't say it enough. Both these teams look good as we're going to get ready to put it into play right here. Yeah, I'm back in the shotgun. Low snap, but it's picked up by Bruce. Oh, my goodness. He's got room. He's got speed, but he's caught oh. at the at, He's caught. He was down. Are they oh, going to call that down? Yeah, he was down. He was down, oh, they, Brett. Wow. They got him what? down at the 18-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Heck of a run. Heck of a run Man. By, our, uh, by our guy there, uh, Dominic Bruce. And that was Heck to, of a run. And to Marcus Three, you're going to see here coming in number one. Just, just hawking him. He hawked him down on that one. He did. And, and that, was, that was, <laughs> a, a, again, a show that those guys know how to play and have been coached. He went to go strip the ball. Absolutely. And time he out. pulled it out. Time out on the field, Brett, called by. No, actually not time out. End of the first quarter, man. What an exciting first quarter as we get ready to flip the field. Back to back. Man, they, they, they told us it would happen. They, they gave us a precursor last year, yeah. and then it's playing out again, man. Carver, we know that. I love it. BCS Under the Lights, Friday night edition. For the first time, you, you're watching history tonight as we broadcast our first Friday night football game for BCS Under the Lights. A low snap, but it's picked up by Bruce. Oh, my goodness, he's got room. He's got speed, but he's caught oh. at the – he's caught. He was down. Now, Brent, I'm going to say, looking at that replay, they may have yeah. had a case for that ball coming hey. out. Hey, <laughs> hey, if they heard him get it snapped and nobody says anything, if there's no replay in high school. No replay in high school, baby. They need, they need to hire us out so <laughs> they can you utilize our, our camera crew because that was a good shot. That It wasn't definitive. I'm not saying he fumbled, but, but it, it, would, it, would, it would warrant a it review fairly if we shaky. were in college or, or pro. That would warrant a, oh. a, a relook. <coughs> <coughs> the stick man get in place. We're ready to get this second quarter underway. Ball is at the 18-yard line and Winona is threatening. Young. Anthony Young. The third. Trey Young. Quarterbacking for the Dragons. In the shotgun. Trips right. Man in motion to the left. Bringing up twins both sides. Look like he left a little soon, but they didn't call anything. Back to pass. He's looking. He's looking. He's throwing. Oh, Six. and it's a Does he drop that? He dropped it. He dropped it. it that was, was nice. Oh, it was right in the bread Anthony, basket, you, I, I don't know how he drops that. I, You know, we're going to help him out. The lights were in my eyes. Uh, sand got in my in my visor. Uh, Trey could have run, and he didn't. He trusted his receiver. He made the football play. But yet we also had illegal motion. I thought I saw some uh, – unsynchronous movement when that play Along started. The, hey, 
But like they said, if they don't call it, it didn't happen. But yet they did, so oh, they're they backing did. them up. So so that that play gets erased. Oh, my uh, goodness. But I'm sure Coach is going to remember it. Trey is going to remember it, and that receiver will yeah, as well. Yeah, Omar Holcomb, I know he wants that again. I know he wants that again. I know he's in the huddle saying, call it again, Coach. Call it again. So that – that brings up first and 15 now. Young back in the shotgun again. Looking, handoff around the There's left Bruce. side. He's got room. He breaks a tackle. And a flag is and on the play. Touchdown is probably coming back, Brett. It looks like it's going to be coming back. It's either going to be a hold. Looks like that's what it is. Again, another great defensive stance. Mm by the Rams in this case. Bruce makes a beautiful break outside. He breaks to a tackle, and just to have it come back, that is so disheartening. I know he's going to be having a conversation with somebody in that huddle on that. I know you're trying. You're trying to block me. You're trying to block for me. But come on, guys. I am outside, and I am gone. Brett, Winona has three viable weapons. Yes. Trey Young. You got Bruce at tailback. You got the you got threes out there at receiver, yeah. and and that's just who we've seen so far. Yes, yes, yes. Man, this man, I I can't say it enough. Go ahead, Nick Howard, and what you're doing uh, with these win on the dragon, son. I I see you. I see you, little brother. I see you, man. You're doing a great job. Yeah, but I know these coaches. I know this drives them crazy when you they start seeing their offense start to start to. Uh, Attack, yeah, they're starting man. to get on cylinders, and then something like this. Because what we got here, Brett, like a first and 22 maybe. Drop back. He's protected a little, collapsed in pocket, and he's trying to run for it. Got some room. Nice dips to do to get outside. He turns the corner. Oh, my goodness, gets a block and gets all the way down to the four-yard line. That's all Trey Young. Gets the first down. Do you see Young how he <laughs> he go he runs almost about another 40 yards just from sideline to sideline before he even starts to move. But Absolutely. He, he stops. He he dips. He gives him a little shoulder. He takes it back. He moves on. But he is a phenomenal athlete. He is a great quarterback. He is a guy that you're going to keep your eye on. On cue, young man, made a way to make us look good up here. You are a viable weapon for the Dragons. First and goal for the Dragons. The win on a band over there. Getting it in. Hand off to Bruce. He goes right. He goes up the middle. He scores. And he scores. There you go. He Touch gets in. Down Winona. Now, here we go. Now we are in a game. We what are you in say? a game. What it, you say? That that that's a good running back. Again, right I, on cue. Put I'm that foot down <laughs> yes. and cut it up, man. Yes, when you see him cut outside. I also like the guys up front, how they are giving him those lanes. Absolutely, man. Uh, Winona is setting up. Looks like they are preparing for the point after. The score nodded at six. Outstanding job. Wow, man. This is, this is a good football game, man. Good football game right here from George Washington Carver High School. And the point after, sponsored by AFT, is up, and it is good. So Winona takes the lead, 7-6 field goal by Demarcus Johnson. Outstanding, yeah. multi-talented athlete. He kicks field goal. I catch, I, I, I catch touchdowns. I can block. I can play defensive back. You know, you whatever it is. You know, I'm going to bring out the water. Tell me what you need done. I got it. Good stuff, man. Good stuff as we're here at George Washington Carver High School, BCS, under the lights. I'm your host, Steve Brown, here with my man, Brett Oates, and we're bringing you the historic first Friday night broadcast of BCS under the lights. We're in year number two. Last year, we broadcast only on Thursday night. This year, because of some other scheduling things, we had to move and select a couple of Friday night games, and so here we are. Carver High School hosting the Winona Dragons in our historic first Friday night broadcast. Brett on a historic night, mm -hmm. a night 
that we commemorated in this great city of Birmingham. People from all over the world are in town now to commemorate what was a great loss in the city of Birmingham, oh, the, yeah. the loss of five children, four little girls at 16th Street Baptist Church, a young man uh, traveling with his friends. But, but what happened to them changed the world and fueled the civil rights movement in this country. As we see the kickoff covered well by Carver High School, uh, as they get it back, Winona does, to about the 25-yard line to get this drive going. I should say Carver to get this drive going. Yeah, going back to what you were talking about, you know, not being from Birmingham. But I, when I came here, those were some of the places I wanted to see. And everybody who comes here to visit me, they ask me, how far are you from the 16th Street Baptist Church? How wow. far are you from Kelly Ingram Park? The things that we go by every day, how much of an influence of the things that happened here in the city of Birmingham has influenced not only just around here, the state of Alabama, or even the country, even the, the state of Alabama, but the country and the world. Absolutely. As we look at the Carver Rams take the field for their next possession, 7-6 ball game, 10 minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Winona's coming. He was under pressure. Oh, he was trying to throw it away, and it was almost picked. It was a gift, and he dropped it. Oh, oh, man, he put it right in his oh, hands he of put, the defender. Oh, I know. He said if you give me another opportunity on that, Isaiah uh, uh, Chavez is, says he's going to give me another shot. Throw it again. I guarantee you I'll bring it in. Absolutely. So this is turning into the Carver on Friday night. As you were saying, this is our first show. On Friday night, this is turning into the Carver we know to track me. Absolutely it has. <laughs> Trips right. Twins left, no backs, empty backfield. The quarterback for Carver, number eight, getting his team, Cortland Warner. No, that's Naheem Hicks getting his team together. Passes out to the right, short game. Short game, number 19. Number 19, Isaiah uh, Chavez again. No, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, Chavez. Brings up a third down for the Rams as they look over to the side to get their play call. Coach Zig again has this offense looking good, man, looking good. Everybody knows Coach Ziggler is a great offensive mind. Former head coach, uh, blitz on, nice screen call, dumped off, room, brought down, but we got a flag on the play. Nice setup. Probably Ziggler. coming back. Ah. Uh. Holding against Carver is the signal. Oh, nice little screenplay. It really was beautifully designed, just did not get completely executed. Brett, you know, a lot of people don't realize, got, got to realize, Brett, a lot of people did not realize that the 16th Street Baptist Church was not the only bombing that occurred over the struggle in Birmingham. We're going to go to the station ID quickly and come back and talk about that. Success starts in Birmingham City Schools. Teachers, preachers, professors, college presidents, CEOs, chefs, and welders, business owners too. They all get their start in Birmingham City Schools. BCS offers an engaging curriculum in all grades, pre-kindergarten to prepare our children for the future, award-winning academies, and career technical programs. Middle schools focused on career paths and early college for scholars who want to get ahead. Go to bmcityschools.org. Begin your road to success in BCS today. Back here, Carver High School, as we have a, a AEA timeout uh, on the field. Brett, we were saying that, you know, um, you know, the 16th Street uh, Baptist Church bombing obviously is the most infamous bombing. But there were tons, there, there, were, mm -hmm. there were 20, 30, 40 or so bombings of homes, of other yeah. churches, of, of meeting places to try to thwart the planning and the, and the mobilization of the people for the civil rights movement. Yeah, do you remember the movie by Spike Lee, uh, Four Little Girls? He talks about Bombing Hill, which is College Hills and all that. Exactly, that. Dynamite Hill. Dynamite, yeah. yeah. Dynamite Hill because there were so many bombings. Now, you know what's interesting? This was a mining town.
mm-hmm. you know, because it's a steel industry. Mm-hmm. So so the, the mines that existed in the Winona area, the mining uh, camp over there, uh, the Docena area. So there were a lot of people who worked in those mines that had access to Mm-hmm. Dynamite mm-hmm. and pr- were proficient in using it. So, mm-hmm. so you know that is why you had so many bombings in this area because you know these guys were were, were clipping out sticks mm-hmm. from from the mines and coming out here using it uh, f- for their cause, man. Which obviously was a nefarious one. Yeah. But yeah, there there had to be uh, uh, Fred Shuttlesworth home was bombed uh-huh. multiple times, and we know that the Phillips Academy gym. And I'm sorry, the auditorium has been revitalized and will be na- has been renamed. Actually, the ceremony was last week. Uh, no, coming up on the 18th, uh, I believe. Okay. We have a graphic for that, for the renaming of the Phillips Academy Auditorium as uh, in honor of Fred Shuttlesworth. Wow. Uh, yeah. I had an opportunity to meet him years ago. Wow. And it was such a privilege to meet him. Uh, his, his character, you could just see the strength in his the way that he, com- you know, just spoke to me. Absolutely. And, and, and that's what, what we want our young people to understand, man. Strength is in restraint. True strength yeah. is when you restrain yourself in these difficult situations. You don't respond the same way the other person is responding to you, mm-hmm. but yet you, you take a higher calling. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what people like Fred Shuttles were. That, that's what the civil rights foot soldiers did, man. Yeah. You, didn't, you didn't see people striking back no matter, because there were dogs, because there were hoes. Those children were taught and trained well by their parents, yeah. by their teachers, and they did a civil, nonviolent protest that shook up the world. Yes, it did. You know, I, I, I hear, you know, kids, you know, when you talk about that, you know, they'll say in school, well, I couldn't have done that. And I say, well, you're in 2023 and you're able to stand on the people's shoulders That's right. who allow you that you don't have to deal with those indignities that they did. And it was a deliberate. It was a deliberate thing that we have to understand. All as adults and children, they weren't born that way. That's right. They had to practice. They yes. had to mentally prepare through prayer, mm-hmm. meditation. You know, talking with with their parents and church members and other leaders to be ready mm-hmm. to withstand the pressure and to be able to respond nonviolently when faced with stress. Let's take another ID. I appreciate our our referees giving us this time. I still got it. I'm Big Walt Wilson, representing the Birmingham Board of Education and proudly representing District 7. You're watching BCS Under the Lights. Yes, indeed, that was board member Walt Wilson, affectionately known in the community and across this city as Big Walt, giving us a, a greeting here as we are ready now to resume action. Nine minutes and 30 seconds, 39 seconds to go. 7-6, Carver on the attack. Fake left, fake right. He goes on the run on third down, gets to the 34, 35-yard line. Not enough. For the first down, Brett brings up fourth. Three, did you see his feet? Did you see his, his footwork there? How he was dancing and moving, constantly trying to move forward. Uh, fast feet, very clean, very quick. Very you quick know, feet for that young man. Getting outside, but just came up a little short. But it looks like they're, it looks like they're not going to present the punting unit. They're going to go and for one. It. Yeah, they, they went wildcat, gave it to three. He goes, he gets it. And more. Go Rams on a, on a, wow, a risky, a now, risky play. That is a gutsy play call by the, 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 the coaches. But it also shows your, your offense and your guys that I believe in you. Let's go get it. Send it on both sides from both coaches. Again, Wildcat back to three. He's met. Oh, my goodness. And he's de-helmeted by that hit. He's yeah. going to have to go sit down. No, actually, that was a win on a player who brought the wood and lost his hat. So he's going to have to sit out for a play. Number five of the Dragons. Who is that, Brett? That is Omar Hoskin. Go ahead, Omar. Bring in the wood. Get you a little rest and get on back in here. Brings up second down and about six for Carver. So Anthony Young comes in for uh, Hoskin. 
on Anthony that play. Anthony Young getting a little, getting a little burn at defense. Eight twenty-six to go before halftime. Oh, the pocket oh. collapses and he goes down, sack by the Dragons. There you go. Artez Jones comes in there, pinned his ears back, came straight in. He came at 100% trying to go ahead and get three. Back the Rams up to the 41-yard line. Brett, man, we got a game. I'm loving it, man. Friday night under the lights of BCS 7-6 at George Washington Carver High School. They're playing some football here tonight. If you don't like if you don't like hard hitting, fast moving football, this isn't for you. It's not for you, but I think this is for any fan of excellence. You're seeing it on the field tonight. Back to pass, going deep, up in the air, out of out of the reach of the receiver. Demarcus Story, he's number four. Story. That's one of my Eagle Nook guys. Yes, sir. You know Represent. everybody over here. Well, hey, man, we were feeder school to <laughs> Eagle Nook. I grew up in Winona, so, yeah, man. But, yeah, those are my guys, man. Every. Story. <laughs> everybody. Steve, everybody I saw come over here, they were like, oh, how are you doing? I, I kind of felt kind of bad. I, <laughs> it's all right, Brett. You know me, so you, <laughs> you, you, you're just as good, too, my friend. Yeah, Story comes from a line of great athletes. Uh, who have, have come through Carver High School? Couple went to Parker. Uh, one of his brothers uh, went went to uh, went to Jacksonville State on a baseball scholarship. Uh, his little brother Dominique is one of my baseball players. Uh, uh, one of our 11U players that mm, made okay. it to runner-up for the uh, little league in the national Alabama State State Finals. Brett, we were runner-up. We're gonna try to do some big things next year. High snap, bad snap. It's going to make him have to try to go for it. And they push him out of bounds. Wow. wow. Crit critical error there, Brett. At yeah, a bad high time. snap. High snap. You saw we know we know it was not going to uh, back off the pressure out there. I thought he might get he might get around the corner. However, the Winona Dragon defense, those guys can pursue. They really get after the ball, so they were able to cut off the field. They took a great angle, so they weren't allowing him to get to those uh, to that uh, uh, first down marker. So it's first and ten for the Dragons now with a one-point lead. They'll take over in Carver territory at the 43-yard line. Seven minutes, 20 seconds remaining. Handoff. Oh, he's moving, man. Look at that guy go. Look at him go, man. First down, Dragons, and he's still not down. Bruce. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Bruce. Bruce. Yes. Here you go, Bruce. And if you tell, if you, if you have the ability to talk about this guy, Bruce, he is not a big guy. Not but he plays guy. like he's 5'6", 156 pounds. But he plays as if he is six foot three, 225. A senior carrying that rock. And he's quick. He's very fast. There he goes to Bruce off the left side. They got a hold of him this time. And they didn't let him go. No, they had, <laughs> I tell you, number 22 with that, you had Jamar Lee had him around his waist to pull him down. Brings up second down for the Dragons. Bruce going out to get a little breather there. Deservedly so. I'm yeah, sure I, he won't be out long. I was going to say the same thing. He deserves that one. A little bigger back in there this time, uh, number four. For the Dragons. Kevin Peoples. He gets the handoff around the right side. Gets the edge. Turns it up. We got a penalty. Two penalty flags. Two pieces of laundry on the field. We know what that's for. More than likely holding. Yeah. Yeah. The way that he was able to bounce outside, I think somebody was grabbed, tripped, held. However you want to put it, it was illegal. George Washington Carver High School. You're watching BCS Under the Lights. 
Let's go Rams. Okay, we had a penalty call holding against the Dragons. It's going to bag them up to about the 29-yard 29, 29 line and make it second and 19 for the Dragons. Single receiver left, twins right, handoff, no. Play action, dumps it off, and it's a little too high. Wow. He's open to make that catch number eight for the Venona Dragons, Gary Madison, the 6'2", 200-pound senior tight end. Nice size. Young has been high on about three passes yeah. tonight that his receivers were open. Uh, I, 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 can, I can pretty much say I believe they're going to have that available second half. Carver better be ready to defend that. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna have to work that out. I don't know why he's overthrowing him. It looks like he has good footwork. He's, he's turned, but he's just overthrowing those guys, and they're clearly open. Technically, Brett, what I see is feet aren't set. Now his feet are set here, he's dropping back, and he is under duress and has to throw it away. I'm seeing if they were going to hit him with a a grounding, but he, they don't. Well, we got a timeout for a water break. Five minutes and 44 seconds remaining before halftime. The score is seven to six. Winona with a one-point lead. Fourth down pending from the 29-yard line. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back. I'm Dr. Mark Sullivan, superintendent of Birmingham City Schools, and you're watching BCS Under the Lights. Back to George Washington Carver High School as we're in the midst of a water break timeout called by the officials, even though we, it is a little cool tonight, Brett, but it's still yeah. humid. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is still warm here in the south, so we appreciate the Alabama High School Athletic Association mandating water breaks, giving the kids just an opportunity to get some hydration so they can still perform at their best. Yeah, and the way these kids are playing right now, they are motoring. You're seeing guys breaking outside. They're breaking, uh, you know, they're breaking these long runs. Defense is running. These guys are flying all over the place. That's a good, that is a good rule. So here we go. And that timeout was an AFT-sponsored timeout and an AFLAC-sponsored timeout. This is a fourth down critical for the Dragons. Young back to pass. Screen play call. Dumps it off to Bruce. Red by Carver and squashed. Yes, Carver it takes is. over on downs. Number 58, Jacoby Dennison on that one. Came out. He smelled that from the beginning when they would uh, – when that play was developing, you could see Jacoby just, he was buying his time, big man, just buying his time. The Carver defense steps up yet again at a critical time. We haven't seen a punt yet. Uh, we, we saw an attempted punt, bad <laughs> yes. snap led to uh, uh, the young man trying to run for it and he didn't make it. What an exciting game, five minutes and 35 seconds remaining before halftime. Carver ready to put it in play. We have DJ Wade. He's behind the center. Wade has been doing a good job leading the Carver offense. And we had some a penalty, delay of game. Uh, here we go. He, you got me that time, DJ. I just said you've been doing a good job running the offense. Now, we see, if you don't say anything, game. Steve, he continues to play well. Right. It's like that old no-hitter coming <laughs> in baseball <laughs> right. in the sixth inning. You know, right. you don't do it. You say nothing about it. Don't even look at the pitcher. Exactly. You don't even look at it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they know about that, Brett. They're not baseball guys <laughs> like us. Trips left, single receiver to the right, way back in the shotgun, back to pass. Screen play now for Carver. That screen is working. He's got room. He's got speed, and he's bumped out of bounds. At 43, that's our guy. Uh, is that six Sigler, or eight? That is number Sigler. Just out, bumped out of there by Bailey, 6'1", 155, Junior, that, who is the safety, had to come up God. and bump Bale, uh, uh, Sigler out of Sigler. bounds, or he's out of here. Both coaches using that screen play effectively against these aggressive defenses. 
Uh, Carver's now over into Dragon territory at the 38-yard line. Back to pass way. The inside screen this time. Oh, we got room. And he gets it down to the 30. Another first down. Now, now what I've noticed, like you see on this play, he's getting up gingerly. Yeah. The Winona defense are making these receivers feel it. Yes, when they, they when they catch the ball, Brett. Yeah, Artez Jones on that uh, bubbles inside. You saw that he took off, but he took a shot right there on his hip. He did. He did. They 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 closed him, man. They closed in on him. Hopefully he'll be able to cover. We got a timeout now uh, by Winona. It'll be a first down for the Dragons. Uh, as as our boy Robert would say, uh, they they were going NASCAR on them, so they had to call a timeout. <laughs> and this is an AFLAC timeout. James W. Brown, District Sales Coordinator, call James 205-745-1130 or email him at j12 underscore brown at us dot aflac dot com. I had to say Brown that way, Brett. I'm not I'm not any kin to to uh, brother James Brown, but you know when that when that name is out there. Just had to say that it a little, way. A little, uh, a <laughs> yeah, I like how you get that, uh, the brown. <laughs> yes, we are here at George Washington Carver High School on a historic day in the city of Birmingham as we commemorate five lives that were lost 60 years ago. Uh, 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 Judge Katunji Brown, Mm -hmm. uh, Jackson's in town. Yeah. in town today, one of the keynote speakers yeah. at 16th Street Baptist Church. Many other dignitaries. I believe the vice president has been in town this week. Uh, uh, certainly our, our, uh, our, our, our representative, Terry Sewell, in town. Mm -hmm. uh, and many others, man, just making sure that we never forget the sacrifice made by those young ladies and their families and the cause. Snap underway, another screen play. They are milking the screen, and it's working. Eight-yard gain this time for Carver. And get back to our guy again, Sigler. Absolutely. Good to see him back in there after getting knocked up a little bit uh, in, the, in, in a couple plays ago. I like how these guys, you know, hey, like they say, if, if run it till they stop it. Exactly. Second and about five. Back to pass. The rush is on. He throws it out of bounds. No completion there. Yeah, that was tipped by a defensive player. Uh, he came up from that uh, defensive back position number, I think that's 31, that came up. I want to make sure I get that uh, Patterson. Great pursuit on the other side of the field. Brings up third and four. Uh, for the Rams here in deep in Dragon territory. Wade getting his signal from the side. Coach Sig sending it in. Great offensive mind that Coach Sig is, and you see it on display in his players. And we've got a timeout, Carver as they want to make sure they get this one right. Timeout by the Rams, four minutes and 30 seconds. Before halftime, Winona with a one-point lead, seven to six here on BCS Under the Lights. We're going to take a break as we go into this AFT. Aflac, AEA, timeout. What's up, everybody? This is Mayor Randall Woodfin, and you are watching BCS Under the Lights, a production of Birmingham City Schools. Keep it locked. We appreciate the support of our mayor, our city council, our school board, and all of our fans and friends of the Birmingham City Schools, many of whom are watching from all across the world, Brett. There you go. And, and we want to re remind everybody to let's make sure that you share our live stream link. Make sure your national alumni associations know. We know both Winona and Carver have huge national alumni associations, and they need to be tuned in, getting a taste of home, even though they can't be here with the best seat in the house with me and Brett right here on Under the Lights. Third hey. down, coming up. Man in motion. Wade 
Hands it off. Th three. Breaks a tackle. Pulls a tackler. Only gains about one yard. They sniffed that out. Uh, number 35, Kassan Abrams, the 5'8", 165-pound junior linebacker, was there to stop that right in its tracks. Fourth down and four from the Winona 22-yard line. And Carver is going for it. Down by one point. Back to pass his way. He looks. He goes up top. Over the top. We've got contact. The referee's there. reaching for his flag, and he got it out. He got it out because it was contact, and we've got a pass interference against the Dragons. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. There we go. You have uh, number one, uh, three. Was, uh, he, that was the target, but he was grabbed. We got to tell Mr. Rep, have that in, hanging out, baby. He had to dig kind of deep to pull <laughs> that one out. You don't want these fans to get restless on you. Like, what's the call? But what's he the got call? it. Pass interference against the Dragons. So that is a 15 yard penalty. So it will move the ball just inside the 10 yard line. I tell you, that was, I thought that was going to, if he does not grab him, he scores on that one. Absolutely. I, I think it was an accurate pass. Well, Brett, I stand corrected. The ball was marked at the 11, and they snap it, give it to three. He's breaking tackles. He's pulling tacklers. And he gets it to about the four-yard line. He gets in there. I mean, he does it. The line up front, they're pushing their guys around. You have a, a, a three. And back to the line quickly. This brings up second and one. Aaron Handoff pitches it outside to the corner. He's got room. He's got green and a touchdown for Kava. There you go. Nice quick pitch to the outside. Almost a jet. Absolutely it was. That was number six. Sigler for the Rams makes the score now 12 to 7. Carver is positioning to go for two once again. Three minutes and 16 seconds before halftime here on BCS under the lights. Pitch, fake pitch, no, up the middle. Two point conversion Two. for the Rams makes the score 14 to seven. Three, he dips, he dodges and goes right up the middle. Nice fast movement. This guy is elusive. That extra he point was sponsored by the American, I'm sorry, the Alabama version, the Alabama branch of the American Federation of Teachers, AFT. James W. Brown, AFLAC agent, our sponsors for that two-point conversion. 14-7, to seven, Brett, what a game, my brother. Wow, that was really a gutsy call. They went for it. Uh, their guys, you know, that, again, that says a lot about the coaching staff and their belief in their players. Really does. Uh, the bands are getting ready on the sideline, ladies and gentlemen, because the, the, the battle does not take a break at halftime. It goes up to another level as the two of our outstanding high school bands take the field. We've got Director Moore over there for the Winona Dragons, Director Means over here for the Rams. And get ready because you're going to see a beautiful show right here on BCS under the lights. You know, Steve, I always like the bands, always like to watch. The only thing about music is uh, I can't carry a tune, not even in a suitcase. So <laughs> I, I always take my hat off to these young men and women that are, uh, it's a discipline. And I, I, I enjoy live music. Uh, and I, I think that, and I, I love the programs that they're doing in the city now and getting back with this music. I think that is phenomenal. Absolutely. And you know, uh, one of the untold stories is that, man, I want to say, uh, give me give me a two to three year window here, but maybe about 10 years ago, uh, Dr. Deborah Mays wrote a grant that allowed the, the music department to bring back music instruction in the elementary schools and stoke up middle school bands. Mm. And we're seeing that come to fruition right now. I think Dr. Dr. McAfee, the retired Dr. McAfee, had a hand in that. So we see the, the fruits of their labor going on right now. As we have a great kickoff return that you're watching, he reversed his field. Oh, my Holcomb. 
and made it to the 43-yard line as the action does not stop on BCS under the lights. I think we've, again, I think we uh, labeled this wrong. This is the Carver we know to track me. <laughs> how about that? These guys are moving across. You saw Holcomb, how he reversed field. Uh, these speed. Guys are, speed on both sides, Oh, my Brett. goodness. Oh, my goodness. So Winona has three minutes and five seconds remaining in the half. They put the ball in play on their own 43-yard line. Let's see what Nick Howard and his offensive staff is going to dial up as we draw near to the end of the first half. Handoff to Bruce. It he did. finds room. He breaks a tackle, and he's off, and he's running, and he breaks another tackle all the way down to the 21-yard line, and there are no flags on the play. Oh, not a bit. How do you not like this guy? How do you not like this guy? Man, Bruce. Bruce breaks outside. He's hard to take down. He's quick, and if you, if you hit him, you know, with his size, you probably think you can just push him over. Well, you're wrong. He's going to get down to – he's getting down. I saw the, the uh, guard pull on that and open up that hole for the Renona Dragons. Those guys are really being well coached on that line. Absolutely, man. Both teams, man, reflect some good coaching. Fake the handoff this time. Young with the pulling guard goes left, and he's brought down. But big number 78 was right there in front of him. Brett, I think the quickness of that defender allowed him to elude yeah. 78. Mm -hmm. uh, so that brings up second. May have, may have lost, uh, didn't, didn't lose, didn't gain. Second and 10 from the 21. Two minutes, 12 seconds, and counting in this first half, in this exhilarating first half of high school football in Birmingham, Alabama. Just the athleticism on both sides of the ball is just outstanding. Trey Young in the shotgun, running backs both sides, looking to pass. Ah, I thought I saw a holding pass, and he completes it. Touch down. Holcomb. Winona. That is Holcomb, but number five. But there is a penalty flag down about the four-yard line. Brett, I honestly thought I saw a hold back at the line of scrimmage. But I don't see a flag back there. I see. Well, it's down there. The referee is down there by the three-yard line. May have been some kind of pass interference, you think? If he's going to call. Or it may have been a block, a crazy block. Is that coming back? He's walking it off. Yeah, it looked like it was a spot foul. So it must have been some kind of holding in the midst of the play. That's what it was, holding. a holding in the midst of the play. And they've been bitten by that one several times So tonight. they still get the first down. So it's first and 10 now from the, looks like the 14. One minute and 42 seconds remaining in the first half. After a play like that, you have to be able to be strong mentally for you to come back because that was a beautifully executed play. Absolutely. Oh. Brett, I so, en so enjoyed seeing uh, my, my Ingle Nook students who moved on up here to Carver High School in the pregame, yeah. the cheerleaders, man. I mean, you know, and, and one of the students said, do you remember when I was bad? Yeah, I, said, I thought no, that baby, was hilarious. I, I, don't, I don't even remember any of that, <laughs> you know, I, because they got to understand it was all a process to get them here, right. to get them prepared as we're ready for this critical play on second down, low snap, young back to pass. He's going to run it up the middle. He's touched. He's tackled. Wow. I love and his, another flag. Another flag in the backfield here. Holding. There we go. I love the way the style of running style of uh, Anthony Young. Oh, yeah. He's very smooth. He, he's, he's a very smooth runner. You can see he's looking right where he is. He's uh, a guy who's just not running. He is looking at what's going on out there. He has those eyes moving and watching what those defenders are. Absolutely. 
So they're backed up yet again. This time, the ball is spotted at the 23-yard line. One minute, 25 seconds. Second down. Young in the shotgun. Back to pass. Looking. Scrambling. Running for his life now. Gets away. Gets a block. Oh, another great block. And here comes the flag. A late flag. Wow, and someone on the Carver sideline was hurt as a result of that tremendous block. You know, anytime you start reversing field, man, you, yeah. you better have the head on a swivel if you're a defender. Yeah, he didn't see it coming at all. Are they saying it was a personal foul because he was defenseless? Yes, they are. They call it head-to-head -head contact. But you can tell the the the, the damage was look at, looked like at the legs. Yeah. Decleated him on that one. It, I mean, it was really from my end a good solid block, but I know the emphasis now is on safety. Yes. And yes. They, they, you definitely don't want to go head to head, but but that's just an awkward situation when somebody reverses the field like that. You you almost always run a risk of getting a penalty as such. Yeah, they're helping him off. He's he's they're helping him off with his own power. Uh, you can see he's walking up very gingerly. That is uh, uh, Crawford Warner, uh, Cortland Warner, rather. So we know that it's so moved walking. back yet again. This is this is critical here. This is critical. Every time a little further back, now they're going to put it in play at the 34-yard line. It's still going to be second down, but it's second and 24, one minute and six seconds before halftime. We're known to desperately trying to get a score. Low snap, Young back to pass. Looking, 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 and he throws it away. Now, one of the things wow. I'm going to say, Brett, they're going to have to decide what they're going to do with that ball. A lot of these holding penalties are going to come right. w w when you don't make a decision to pass That's or right. run. That's right. The offensive guys can only hold up for so long. They're taught to, to hold their block for so long. Uh, then when you have that start moving around, you know, they're big guys. They're starting to <sighs> – they're going to breathe a little heavy. Right. Hey, man, get rid of the ball. Now, on the <laughs> other side, big ups to the – to the Carver secondary. Definitely. Because obviously they're playing some defense to lock those receivers down. However, we pointed out yeah. earlier, we need to see these Winona receivers coming back yeah. to help out Trey Young when he's in that situation. Yeah. They've Third got down. Team. Young back. He's under the rest. He's looking again. They're approaching him. He launches it. And it. Oh, everybody incomplete. wanted to pass interference, but they were blocked I don't know. up. Yeah, it was a duck. It was yeah. a short pass. Yeah. Uh, that brings up fourth down now. Carver with an opportunity to make a significant stop here before halftime. 43 seconds remaining. And I say that because I'm pretty sure we know it's going to go for it based on what we've seen so far. Yeah, the, the receiver and the defensive back, they were both in grip, both positions. So both of them had the opportunity to go after the ball. So that's why there was no flag. So here we go. Fourth down. Trip left. Single receiver to the right. Bruce offset to the right of Young. Young back to pass. Looking. Looking. Throws it. Wide open. Caught. He's got 12 to get for the first down, and he's cut short. So Carver stands up to the test, stops Winona from scoring before the halftime, and they'll take over with 34 seconds remaining before we take a break. Yeah, Young to uh, Carmen, uh, Cameron Peterson. Nice catch, but just couldn't get to the first down marker. Absolutely a nice catch, uh, but, but Carver was prepared. They had about four DBs back behind him, definitely giving up the underneath, protecting the first down mark. Great play by the defense of Carver. Scores 14 to seven. Winona with the seven-point lead. No, I'm sorry, Carver with the seven-point lead and the ball right now. Handoff up the middle. He breaks a tackle or two, 
gets about seven yards. That's Isaiah Shevers again. Shevers getting his name called a lot tonight for the Rams. Looks like they're going to let this run down. 14, 10 seconds remaining in the half. Yeah, they're just going to let the clock expire here. And we're at the end of the first half. What, what a, game. a game, Brett. There we go. We're in a game. Man, we a, are in a game. A historic a night, night for the city schools. BCS Under the Lights first Friday broadcast. And we've got a game for you. Carver and Winona, 14-7 to at the halftime. Carver with the lead. Uh, you, we're going to get ready for our halftime. Sponsored by AEA, the Alabama Education Association halftime show is coming your way. Uh, Brett, quick thoughts before we take our break as we watch the officials leave. The players have left, and we're getting ready to see a battle of the bands. What are your quick thoughts on what we've seen so Fantastic far? Fantastic both play on both sides of the ball, defensively, offensively. We're seeing guys that are spreading out the field. We've seen three run, run for uh, just unbelievable. We're watching Anthony Young do his thing on, on his side of the ball. We're watching the defenses who are swarming to the ball, and they're making plays. Now we've had a couple of, of big plays that were called back. However, they were still playing. These guys are playing ball. They're running from side to side. They're sideline to sideline. Uh, impressive. Kudos to both defenses doing phenomenally uh, defending their end zones. Uh, both offenses doing a great job being being organized, being efficient, gaining yards, but, but yet both offenses having a few issues in the red zone because of these stout defenses. Yes, absolutely. That's coaching. They have these guys, they're disciplined. They're staying at their assignments. So they're, they're staying where they're supposed to be, and they're, they're letting the play come to them. You don't have a guy who's playing out of position causing the big play. Now, they had guys making big plays, but those were just athletic plays. Those were calls being played, being called. So. Absolutely right here at George Washington Carver High School. As you see, the Winona High School Band taking the field. Our halftime score, halftime, not final. We will be back for the second half. The halftime score right now is 14 to 7 when uh, Carver with the lead over Winona at this time. We're going to take our halftime break. This halftime is sponsored by the Alabama Education Association as you take a look at Winona Span, who will be followed by the Carver Rams. We'll be back.
What a great display of musical excellence, of choreographed dancemanship, of marching band excellence. Carver High School, Winona High School, two outstanding programs, two outstanding halftime shows. Again, I was telling you, Steve Earle, man, that is phenomenal when we have our kids that are able to put on a show like that, have that ability. I call it a skill. Absolutely, of, it of is a skill. Playing the instrument, marching, dancing. That's doing right. all that stuff. The flag girls, the, the dancers, the, they put on a good show. And they put in so much work. Now, how do they do it? Realize. They do it, Brett, because they're at school. And ironically, September is attendance month. Parents, students, in order to do great things, you have to be in place. And in the Birmingham City Schools, September is our Family and Parent Engagement Department presents Aiming at Attendance, where we want to focus on improving our attendance. We want kids at school every day, on time and ready to learn. This is also Hispanic Heritage Month in the Birmingham City School. In fact, it begins on September the 15th and the 30 days go over to October the 15th, celebrating our Hispanic heritage in the Birmingham City Schools. Fantastic. Hola, como estas? The first class pre-K pre program, Brett. You know, if you want to start and get your child advanced, you got to get them into some advanced program. The first class pre-K program that we have in the Birmingham City Schools is, in fact, a first-rate program. For more information, call 205-231-9841 or 205-231-9842 for more information. September the 18th. Brett, it continues. The history continues to be made at Phillips Academy. This time, we're looking at the auditorium renaming ceremony. The district just recently upgraded the auditorium at Phillips Academy. On the 18th, it will be renamed for the civil rights hero, Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth. September the 18th, a man that is deserving 
of such an award. Absolutely. There you go. Your business can can become a sponsor as we showcase our student athletes. Sponsorship segments are available to be featured or for more information, contact Cheryl Stewart today at SS Stewart at BHM dot k12 dot al dot us there it is that's our great Cheryl Stewart who leads us on this venture at, at the media director and right now we're getting ready for next week the same win on the dragons will take on the Jasper Vikings we'll get to really be homers because we'll get to pull for our dragons against the outsider September the 21st watch it on live stream watch it on the NFSH network watch it on our BCS web page watch it on our YouTube channel however you watch it Thursday night September the 21st we want you to watch it watch it that's all <laughs> well Brett let's let's look at uh, uh, our first half as we see one last graphic there about our strategic planning and this is so important we want parents community members and stakeholders to be engaged in the planning of our next steps our next meeting will be held September 27th at Parker High School 530 we had one this week at Huffman High School we'll be in the Reverend I mean in the in the auditorium at Parker High School located at 400 Reverend, Reverend Abraham Woods Boulevard. Help us shape our path for the next five years. So, Brett, in the next five years, there'll be another set of guys out here on this field, another set of cheerleaders, another set That's of right. band leaders. But right now, we got some stars out here. Anthony Young oh, yeah. and, 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 and our boy Bruce for Winona. Oh, yeah. What do you have that to say about what they've shown us this first half? Anthony Young, nice feet, able to get around. Fantastic movement. We have Bruce. He is phenomenal. That that guy is a powerhouse. He's super fast, can bust outside, has had long runs. That is because he has had help from those big guys up front. So you're seeing the discipline of the guys up front. You're seeing some really talented skill players. So you're seeing Anthony Young and uh, uh, Bruce. Disimpressive. They need to, I think, get Demarcus Johnson, their 6'4", senior wide receiver involved, get yes. a little more out of him to give them a triple threat. Now over on the Carver side, though, Wade, uh, Sigler, uh, Threats, they, they, they have a, a, a three-pronged approach that's been effective as well for the Rams. Absolutely. We've seen Sigler. He's done the same thing, almost identical to what you're seeing being done with uh, on the uh, uh, Winona side of the ball. He's pressing outside. He's been making some plays. He's gone downfield and made some catches. That's right. So we're seeing outstanding play. I was also impressed with number nine over there, uh, DJ Wade with the uh, Absolutely. Carver Absolutely, the quarterback leading his team oh. down the field. And we got to give it up to both defenses that are playing yes. as a unit getting it done for their respective squads. Yeah. Well, we're getting ready to have this kickoff. We know that uh, Winona received the, the opening kickoff, and now the ball goes to Carver, who has a seven-point lead, 14-7, to seven, as we prepare to begin the second half. Now, I will say this, Steve. This is a rivalry game, you said, from last year. You had uh, Winona uh, get edged out in the last few minutes of that game. This is the same repeat of last year. Absolutely. And, and Brent, let me, I, I, I would be remiss, as we often say, if I didn't give a shout out to the young lady that was the uh, halftime announcer for the Carver Rams. She did a phenomenal job yes. introducing her band and bringing the energy mm -hmm. that really had the crowd on their feet representing this home crowd. Oh, yeah. Th also, it's a privilege for us to be in the booth with a radio icon, Dave uh, Donnell, who's the stadium announcer here for the Carver Rams. As we see our kickoff underway, and they, he's got room. Take there it down again. at the 37. There he goes again. I mean, he does it all. He does it all. Number 19, Isaiah uh, Chevers. He's, uh, he's been... He's been a surprise to me tonight. I don't know if anybody else knew about this young man, but I was I, I didn't have him on my radar screen. I just did not. He is impressive. 
All right, buddy. Here we go. Here we go. Part two. Carver, we know a track meet. Because mm. <laughs> <laughs> these guys are running. They, they are running. Wade has it off up the middle. Stuffed. Met by the by a, a host of dragons. Yes, that defensive unit was led over there by number 55 on that one, Edward Jones. Second and eight. Man in motion creates trips left, single Receiver right, back to pass is Wade. Oh, what a pass, what a catch, what a hit. Football. And it all works. Birmingham City football. There you go, outstanding all the way around. Now that was a good play. Wow. Everybody did their job. That was a great pass, great route by the receiver. Defender was there, safety came over and stopped it. Just a great play. Car on the, the move. Oh, we got a little jump there by Winona, but no harm, no foul. Both teams were heavy with the screen plays in the first half. Now pass over in the flat. Great wow. open field tackle. Great. Did you see him, number 13? Great open field tackle. He was all the way downhill. Uh, Jason Bailey, 6'1", 155-pound junior safety. Came up strong on that. So I thought he was going to get fundamental defensive football on both sides. Yeah, I thought Carver was going to be able to move the ball on that, but he shut that down. We know with a four-man front, two linebackers, five DBs in the game. Trips left, single back right, running back offset to the left of Wade. Snap inside handoff coming to the right. We know to shuts it down. Shuts it down again. That defensive front is starting to really stand up there right now. You see number 35. Only Led one yard gained on that play. Brings up a third and 10 for the Rams. Just inside of Winona territory on the 49-yard line. Brett, we might be headed toward another critical fourth down play in this game. We've seen about three so far. Well, with it being 7 to 14, they've got to make a play. Way back to pass. He's looking. Screen play to his work. We know he's ready. Taken down hard. Ooh. Only a one yard gain that time. Wow, number eight, Gary Mattis. So we told you. Was really on Fourth that. Fourth down. Fourth and eight. 48 yard line. What's the call? Coach Carson, what you going to do? Looking at Coach Sig. Coach Sid sending in a player, sending in Sigler. The way their defense has been playing, I think they're going to go ahead and take a shot. It's a uh, long way to go. I believe you're correct, but I Brett. think they're going to Same rely formation. on their defense to stop Winona if they don't make it. Trips left, single receiver right. They had it. They're looking to pass it under the rest. He's running. He's scrambling. He's oh! sacked. He is brought down. And Winona down. takes over. He is brought down by Winona, number 25, Demarius Reed. We see there another case of receivers running blindly down the field, not coming back to help their quarterback in a critical situation, and he was taken down. He was, he was run down. Demarius Reed ran him down and took him down. I thought he was going to get away. I thought he was going to be able to get away, make a play, because the way he was coming toward the sideline, like he was, he was looking for a receiver that he had ID'd downfield. But uh, Reed said, no, sir. So just that quickly, the Dragons take over now in Carver territory on their 47. Hand off to Bruce. He breaks the tackle, and he falls forward. Bruce gains about six. Every time Bruce touches the ball, Something can happen. Yeah. I yeah, mean, it, Brett. every time you see him just touch the ball, you're like, okay, what are we going to do about it? But again, I have to take my hat off to the Winona, that front line. They are opening up some holes. Eight minutes and 50 seconds and counting in this third quarter. 
Young back in the shotgun. Play action. Look at the pass. He's under the rest. He's going down. He got hard something out of it, but again, receivers running, quarterback scrambling, no help for him. No Brings help. up a third down. No help. Led by Brandon Stover, number 21 of the Carver Rams. Stover, another another one of my Eagle Nook guys. Another one of the Eagle Nook guys? Yeah, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Those Eagle Nook guys are all over the place. They, they are, ladies, man. They're all over the place. Back to pass Young on his third down. Quick pass this time. Skips it. Trying to get it to that receiver Johnson, and it didn't get there. Brings up a fourth down. Here we are again. Britt, the ball moved. Last fourth down, what, five yards? Right. Same location. Let's see what's going to happen here. Certainly, as we've seen, looks like Winona is going to go for it. Down by seven. Both of these teams... Feel very, these coaches feel very confident about their defenses being able to hold their allowing their offenses to go for fourth and long. Absolutely, fourth and nine. Man in motion, trips right. Young back to pass, gets it out quickly, finds him, puts it on his hands, and Johnson gets the first down. Gets it, hits him, finally hits the big man, gets what he wanted out of that one. So. Notice that when 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 uh, Young sets his feet, the pass is accurate and the pass is on the hands of the receiver. He, he, he stood in the pocket tall. Young back to pass, or in the shotgun, we should say. Trip, same formation. Fakes the handoff, runs left, finds a crease. Not much there. Banging, banging, and down he goes. Gains of about five yards. Now again, I look, I look at the officials there. Give me a quicker whistle. There you go. Yeah, there's a little chin wagging going on out there. But, but that's the way the game is called. There so I is. really can't blame them. I mean, when I see my son, son's game, same thing. They're, they're letting the piles stack up this year for sure. I'm going to have to find out. I'm going to ask an official why it would, is the whistle not as quick. I will. Yeah, definitely do the same, Brett. Third, uh, no, second down, sorry. Uh, looks like about six fast-moving quarters, six minutes and 47 seconds. Up the middle. Oh, oh. my goodness. Oh, he was blown. Did you see up. that by number 22, Jacoby Smith comes up hard. Smith comes through there bringing smoke. Woo -hoo. Gone then, boy. Third down for the Dragons. Blew him up. Did you see how fast that Smith came up and Woo. filled that hole? And I mean, he hit him. He hit him good. And we got a player down on the field. Looks like a lineman. Officials timeout with six minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the third quarter. We're going to take a break for some station ID. What's up, everybody? This is Mary Randall Wood. Hey, guys. You are can't watching you BCS in. Under the Lights, a production of Birmingham City Schools. Keep it locked. Success starts in Birmingham City Schools. Teachers, preachers, professors, college presidents, CEOs, chefs, and welders, business owners too, they all get their start in Birmingham City Schools. BCS offers an engaging curriculum in all grades, pre-kindergarten to prepare our children for the future, award-winning academies and career technical programs, middle schools focused on career paths, and early college for scholars who want to get ahead. Go to bmcityschools.org. Begin your road to success in BCS today. All right, back to live action. Third down. Dragons at the Carver 20, well, 31. Snap to Young. Face the handoff. Follows his back. Follows his leaders. Follows his line. Oh, and he's pushed out. 
He's pushed out just shy of the first down. Did you see how Young followed this blocker? He got on that hip, put his hand out there, was guiding this blocker to keep him in between the, uh, the tackle. Brings up a critical fourth and one. You know they're going for it. No doubt. They are definitely going to go for it. 6.20 remaining in the third. Winona comes out. Trips to the left. Single receiver to the right. Running back. Offset to the right of Young. Handoff. No. And oh, had he did, but he is stuck. There's Story. Stuck. He comes right through the middle and stops him. Stuck right there. Number four. By the Rams. Wow. Not only stuffed, but they lost three yards. So now the Dragons will take over. Or Carver, I should say, will take over at their own 29-yard line. Wow, Brett. Wow. Wow. That was a big play. Big play. Story Huge. steps up. Number four steps up on that. Stuffs him in the backfield. On and, a and we go and back to that big play that was blown up by Smith when Winona had a little momentum and he blew through there that time and he stuffed it. He's a play. He's a defense. This this guy's what you would call a, a, a ball hawk. Absolutely he is. First down Rams. Now the, the play clock is winding down, only eight seconds, six now. Four is jumping is jumping three, one. Zero. I don't know what was going on with the play clock. And then Carver didn't have a, a – oh, man, they didn't have 11 on the field. Or did they? I can't tell. No one's coming off. They're sending somebody out. But it is, in fact, a delay of game. You don't need that after that great defensive stop. But you okay. got it. You so have they to start this drive off first – and 15, five yards in the hole. Wade is taking it himself. No, that's three. Number one. And he gains about 12. I just like the way he plays. I liked the way he grabbed the ball, he held it. He was a running back, he was not a quarterback. He knew he was taking that ball. From when he Makes got it snap. very manageable. So Threet is in as the signal caller right now. Pitch left. Room. Oh, he got a little bit. Sigler again. Sigler gets that jet sweep pitch. He gets that jet pitch and. He gets outside. What do we got here? We have an official's timeout. They may be about to measure. We can do a station ID at this time, guys, if you want to. And yes, it looks like that's what we're going to have. We got an official timeout. Five minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the third. Your score is 14 to seven. Carver with the lead. Here we go with this game again, man. This is phenomenal. You're watching this play on both sides of it. Just very entertaining tonight. Absolutely it is, Brett. Uh, three has been doing a great job. You're watching these guys on defense. Story coming up, making a big play. Sigler on the offense of number six. Sigler's making big plays for, and these are just the guys on Carver, let alone. Let's talk about the guys over there for Winona. That have been, you know, what do we say about Anthony Young? He's been doing it all night. You've been seeing uh, other guys who have been stepping up. You know, you got uh, uh, Demarcus Johnson who's making these plays. And we need not say his name at all. Running back, number 17. Well, Brett. For Renona Bruce. Well, Brett, it's fourth down. It's fourth and in inches. Carver is still on the sideline. The officials have measured. Now they're calling timeout again to discuss this further. Uh, Rams trying to take advantage and, and get a get a little 
work in on the sideline. Fourth down. And inches. Inches, I tell you. <laughs> yes, here you go. Will the Winona Dragons defense be able to bow up and stop them? Hadn't been, a, hadn't been a fourth and short situation. Let's see. Carver lines up. They're running out. They go. We have singles left and right. Up the middle they go, and he gets it easily. Yes, first down. They go to keep the drive alive. Carver with the lead, 14 to 7. Four minutes and 56 seconds in the third quarter. And the Rams are on the move. I don't know if DJ Wade is injured, but they've gone to three at quarterback. And three is using his quickness. He's running again out of that wildcat. Ooh, stuffed in the middle, crushed. Maybe he gained a yard. There's, we know the Dragons defense standing up. They gate they, They're saying they gave you that that first down, but you're not going to get much much of anything after that, that defensive stance by the Red Bulls. Absolutely. Red. What's going to happen if they keep wildcatting, that, that defense is going to pin their ears back. And I see right now Carver send, is sending in Wade back in. So now you're going to see a more probably diverse set. And defense have to play a little more honest. It's always dangerous when you situationally substitute your quarterback. It kind of can become predictable, Brett. Well, you know, pitch right. Did he get the corner? Oh, oh yeah, but he oh, rolled him. God. Yeah, he held him and rolled him. Oh, uh, we got a hole. That's coming back. Carver, number 11. Come on, he ran the Kendall Thomas. Absolutely, ran him out he, of there. he all, all but jumped on 13's yeah, he back. Did. <laughs> <laughs> he drove out uh, Joshua Grant. He pushed him into the restroom. That's what <laughs> I mean, like, right in front of the official. He had no. He couldn't do anything else but throw the uh, the flag. So that's going to back up the Carver offense. Winona had a good, I mean, uh, Carver had a good drive going on, and it was uh, pushed back. Back to pass. They're running that screen again. Red oh. and so, oh, my goodness. Almost got somebody hurt that time. Joshua Grant. Winona led that charge. Sniffed that bubble. Yeah, he's getting screen. up gingerly. He's asking to come out. They popped him. He, his eyes was on the ball, and the, and the defender's eyes was on him. Yeah, yeah. And that's their guy, man. They they got They need to keep that kid healthy. Yeah. He's one of their skills. Look like he took a rib shot. Brings up third and long, third and about 16. Offenses ha haven't been able to do anything so far, Brett. Pass, play, he pumps, he looks, he Bumble. dropped the ball. It's on the ground. I'm sure he was hoping the tuck rule was in play, but <laughs> this is not the NFL and they're not New England. Fortunately, hey. it was recovered by the Rams. Looks like we've got a definite, maybe get our first punt here. Fourth and about 13. Carver is on their own 40 now. Yeah. Gary, uh, I'm sorry on that one. Got to Naheem Hicks recovers that for Carver. First punt of dangerous, the night. Dangerous. First punt of the night, Steve? Yes, it is, Brett. Let's see how it goes. High snap. Remember, they tried before, had a bad snap. Low punt, fielded by Winona. He gets past the first guy. Gets past the second, we got a penalty. Get past the third, Woo. but the fourth and the fifth rock his world. And he goes down at the 49, but it's gonna come back uh, because you got a, a, a block, an illegal block or a holding or something back there behind the run. Yeah. Number five, Omar Holcomb on the return for Winona, but it's coming back like you said. You got the laundry out on the, sh on the field. 
coming back. Holcomb has showed some signs that, that he wants to be a key player for the Dragons, yes. hasn't he? Yes, he does. He has made some plays. We've called his name tonight. He's made some big plays. And the thing is, uh, he, they've called back a couple of his big plays. That's right. Both returns, as a matter of fact. You're right. So that moves the Dragons all the way back to what looks like the... My goodness, the the ball to be spotted way back. That play cost about, what, 10, 20, 35 yards. The ball is spotted at the 18 as we put it into play. One minute and 51 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Moving kind of fast here, the third quarter. Both teams kind of keeping it on the ground. Trips right, twins left, empty backfield. Low snap, pump fake right, throws over the middle. Oh, behind him. Oh, his target goes open. Nice little design there. Uh, Peterson, rather, Carmen Peterson, he was the big target. That's a big target. Peterson is a big target. A lot of big receivers on the Winona side. One minute and 46 seconds remaining as they, they're not, yeah, they're calling a huddle, something we don't get to see often. You hear the Carver band getting it in? Second and 10. Young trying to run. He escapes two, escapes four. Goes outside, escapes five. He's gone, Brent. He's putting the speed on. Oh, my goodness. And they oh. push him out at the 30. Trey Young just got loose. Is that impressive? He went up to the middle, put his foot down, bounced to the outside, and he opened it up and shifted straight to fifth gear. I could count by five. ones, Brett. I had to go by twos. He was getting <laughs> by them at a clip, buddy. Hey, he is a big guy who can play. He is a guy that can run. He can throw. Brings up first and 10 at the 30-yard line of the Rams. Trips left. Both teams like this formation. Trips left. You got Bruce in the slot right. He's coming back. Is he got, faking it to Bruce? Looking left, not looking to Bruce, but he gives it nine. Uh, oh, he heard the footsteps of eight. He heard him, and he dropped it. Number nine, uh, Peterson. He heard those footsteps. You saw him look and look off and didn't concentrate on getting the ball into his hand. Now, I don't know if they saw it, but Bruce was open back there on the on the right side. I wonder if Winona would dial that up because they missed the opportunity had he looked back to the right. Yeah. One minute and five seconds in this third quarter. Yeah. Now, we keep talking about Anthony Young, and I was talking with uh, Coach Howard. You know, schools like Troy, UAB, Jack State, Southern Miss are looking at him. Absolutely. They, they like him. Great student, certainly a great athlete. Yes. He's going somewhere. He'll be playing for somebody on Saturdays next year. Okay, he's moving now, but but Ram said he's not going anywhere. In fact, they they took him back for two yards. And 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 he and, and Young rolls up a little slow. Well, I guess the Carver unit said, you're not going to get us on this one again because he did that fake inside and was about to bounce outside. And we've got some conversation over there. I don't know. I, I thought I saw, I don't know what I see going on. Looks like the officials have called something. I was wondering if Young was, was a little banged because he got up slow, but no, it looks like the officials were discussing something. It looked like they were trying to make sure that the spot was correct. So it brings up third and 11. 44 seconds and counting. I guess they say he didn't go out of bounds. Well, we've got a timeout by Carver. Timeout by Carver. We're going to go to a station ID with 42 seconds left. Uh, in the third quarter, 14 to 7. Carver with the lead is your score. I still got it. I'm Big Walt Wilson. 
representing the Birmingham Board of Education and proudly representing District 7. You're watching BCS Under the Lights. Hello, I'm Tiki Hines, principal at George Washington Carver High School. You're watching BCS Under the Lights. Let's go Rams! All right, we're back here for this critical play, third and 11, deep in the Carver territory. Winona is trying to do something with this field position. Young back to pass, looking, the pressure is on. He throws it, he gets it out. He finds Bruce over there. Bruce turns on the speed, bowls over two, and gets down to the 21 yard line. Bruce. Hey man, if you, hey, if you just call Bruce 911. Bruce. If you're in trouble, just call dial Bruce up. He'll <laughs> get you out of trouble. Bruce 911. I like that, Brad. There you go. He gets down there. I mean, he just takes off. You saw he, he had to jump for that ball and he had to take off. And he turned something literally out of nothing into something. Absolutely. So we have another critical fourth down, my brother. Another critical first down. What do you do? You try to spread it out or you go up the middle? You follow up those big boys up the middle? Man, I, I don't know. It looks like that's what they're going to talk about as we go to the end of the third quarter here at George Washington Carver High School. The Carver Ram, 14. The Winona Dragons, 7. Fourth and one coming up. Don't go away. Come back after this station ID. What's up, everybody? This is Mary Randall Woodfin, and you are watching BCS Under the Lights, a production of Birmingham City Schools. Keep it locked. Fourteen to seven. Your home standing, Carver Rams, holding on, holding on to a seven-point lead. We haven't had any scores this second half. Brett, we've been talking about the great yeah. job the defense that they have been doing, and they made some halftime half -time adjustments, clearly. Yes, they did. Both sides made big-time adjustments, we thought we, but we're still seeing offenses break for yardage. So but here we go. A critical for stick man, got to get it right. They got a good official over there keeping them tight. They were ready to move and run, but he said, no, keep it right there. Fourth and one for the Dragons. Big guys in, tight ends in. They dropped the ball, Brett. They drop the ball, they fall on it, but it's over. Carver gets the ball. That drive comes to an end, and Carver takes over at the 23 with the seven-point lead to start the fourth quarter. What a heartbreak to muff that uh, 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 transition between the center and the quarterback at that critical point. Critical mishap as Carver once again the undefeated Carver Rams come up with a bend but don't break stand. Yeah, yeah, the exchange. I, I know that I know Coach is over there on the other side. I know Coach Howard is asking what the heck happened with the exchange. We were right there, guys. The Winona Band on the other side turning it up, exhorting their team. The Winona fans telling the Dragons to hang in. Let's see. They were able to come back last year. Can Carver keep him off? Wade scrambling. Looks, pump fakes. We got a penalty flag. He throws it away, takes a rough hit. And again, Brett, we see it play. Indecisiveness on the part of the quarterback causes a penalty flag on the part of the offensive line. As soon as we saw the flag go down in that area, we knew it was a hold. And that's going to be on the offensive guys. They can only do so much for so long. And as you start to see Carver start to move back, those guys up front, they, they've been doing a good job, but you can't. He's got to get rid of that ball, or he's got to get outside. Brett, I don't know about you, but I sense a shift in the momentum with the field position. 
Carver needs to be very careful here. Yeah. They have a seven-point lead. They don't want to give up a turnover, and they definitely want to try to get out of this deep area so that the field does not flip and they give Winona another chance down here close. Well, defensively, what do you want to do? You want to keep them pinned down here so they have to punt so you can get at least a good return and or? Handoff, bounces it outside off the first defender, breaks another tackle, but only gains about four yards. Great individual effort there by the running back for Carver. There you go. Howard had the ball number two. Bounce outside, like you said. He, uh, you know, but does the defense just want to keep him pinned back here to make him give a punt? And let's start playing field position. And it goes back to what you were saying. Now we're playing field position. Carver, or we know to get to the position and can, and, and can drive. Second and about 17. Carver trying to figure it out. They bring in one of the receivers to be an H-back. Twins left, single receiver out deep right. Threes over there waving his hands. He's saying, me, me, me. He's got to be saying, throw me the ball. This guy can't, can't cover me. Oh. And they blow it. They get too anxious, and they blow it. They, they had him over there. We saw the lineman move his feet. He jumped. I think everybody saw it. Everybody saw it. Yeah, Stevie Wonder saw that one. <laughs> and they back him up five yards to make it second and oh, about 20. He's still over there by himself. No safety up top. That's a dangerous situation. And he's going pump. Oh, my goodness. Another penalty flag. Illegal procedure. They, 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 oh, my goodness. They're, they're shooting themselves in the foot. Uh, calm down. Uh, do, do you call a timeout right now as the coach? You call a timeout. You might need it late in this game. I mean, what more do you, can you say other than calm down, young fellas? <laughs> hey, everybody wants to win this game. They know what's on the line. You've got the lead. Don't. Th yeah, you, you sh you've shot yourselves in both feet now. Carver back to pass from the end zone over the middle. High, no. Incomplete. That's my guy's story. Just couldn't get up high enough. And he's about 6'2", Brett. So it was a high throw. Yeah, that was a high throw. Uh, he was there. He was open. He was open. He was open. If he connects right there, he's still running, I think, right now. Now, it's critical for the Rams to stay together on offense. I, I see a little exhortation there. You know, get me the ball. That's understood. But you want to stay together third and long, third and real long. You don't want to have to punt from this deep. At least they want to get it out. Pass and pump fake. They're trying to go to threes over the top. And it is, oh, almost picked off. But a great recovery by number 10. Oh, man. Yes, Three yes. over there had him. They D finally found him, but they couldn't connect. DJ Wade, I thought he had a pick, actually. He got his hand in there. He was in good position. He was running step for step with the receiver. But he just didn't uh, connect to bring it in. But, Brett, now I got to say, he didn't start off that way. Number 10, who is that for we know that? He closed. He closed on that receiver and made the play. Yes, he did. Number 10, that's uh, Jordan Johnson, the 5'9", 160-pound junior defensive back. He closed in on it. Great he job. He did. He did. Now, Carver, critical. They had high snaps, Brett. They've had high snaps. They get this one good, and it's off. Okay, but look at the punt. It goes. It bounces. It's going out of bounds. He picks it up quickly. Oh, my goodness. Omar Holscomb. Omar what a Holscomb. dangerous play. He picked it up at the 21 as it was about to go out of bounds. He surged forward, almost losing it, but was tackled at the where are they marking that? Can game? you see over there? And a penalty flag came in. My goodness. Winona had the opportunity to, to start the possession at about the 15. The 21 wasn't bad. They're in the huddle. They're trying. They're not ready, boys. Back up. The officials aren't ready. They threw a penalty flag. But they haven't marked anything off yet. Oh, uh, it is against Carver. Against Carver. Five yards. Must have been maybe an inadvertent face mask, maybe. I don't know. Face mask, that's what he calls. Okay. 
Wow, so Winona starts this drive at the nine. Talk about shooting yourself in both feet. Wow. Brett, they're, they're going for their own knees now. <laughs> now, Steve, you said that this could happen. You said the momentum, you called it. That momentum could be changing. Hand off to Bruce. Dancing. Can Bruce get Speed, outside? He gets outside. Oh, my goodness. Touchdown, we know them. No flags. Wow. No flags on the play. Bruce gets in. He bounces outside. He was tied up for a moment. Yes, in there, he was. But he breaks outside. They thought they had him, Brett. They but thought. Bruce had another thought in mind. Yes, he did. And it was like, I'm out of here. So now we've got a critical extra point, an AFT, American Federation of Teachers, Al Flack, James W. Brown, extra point attempt by the Dragons to try and knock this game at 14, 14 to 13 is where it stands. Let's see, snap. He gets it, Johnson, no good. No good. No good. So the score is 14 to 13 as Carver experiences the after touchdown exuberance that Winona had early in the game, making it a 10, I mean a one point game with 10 minutes and 38 seconds to go. Demarcus Johnson attempted the field goal, but I, when he looked around after he kicked it, I didn't think he got it. There's that replay of Bruce breaking tackles, getting around that edge, man. This guy is tough and this guy is fast. He is something else. He's been impressive all night. And, and Coach Howard this week was telling me about Dominic Bruce and what an outstanding uh, uh, player this guy was going to be. Now, Traditions Chicken sponsors our Scholar Athletes of the Week. And we want to give kudos to Winona players number 50, Terrence Marion, a 3.1 GPA. Terrence, you see it right there on the screen getting it done on and off the field. And number three, Joshua Grant, 3.1 GPA as well for the Winona Dragons. Scholar athletes representing Winona, representing their principal, Dr. Willie Goldsmith, to the highest. Way to go, guys. Hey, and Joshua Grant, even though all these guys have great GPAs, he's an AP guy. That's it. 3.1 right. AP. Yeah, that's yeah. all right. Yeah. Advanced yeah. placement, y'all. Getting it done. And Carver has some, too. We'll get to them after this kickoff. 14 to 13 is the score. 10 minutes, 38 seconds remaining in the game. He goes back. He feels it at the 8. Looking for room. Goes down at the 23-yard line. Number three, Dimitri Howard. Uh, uh, yeah, Dimitri Howard trying to make something happen. With the time, we – what do we have, Steve? Are we going in overtime? Well, we we've, got the, we've got that one point, and as my dad would say, that odd point <laughs> is going to make that difficult to happen. <laughs> but we've got time. These guys surprised us last year. Uh, we know they had a 22-point comeback to win by one, so I don't put anything – past these two programs right here because they play good football and we clearly have two good teams on the field tonight. Oh, clearly. You're watching the defense. Both defenses have, like, as you would say, both defenses have bent, but they have not broken. They, the offenses have both been spectacular in sparks and in spots to make things happen. So Carver puts it in play, hand off the three, he changes direction and it's drug down. He Drunk is. down. Loss that, of two yards. He was pulled down by number 55, Edward Jones. Edmund Jones. And we've got a Winona player down on the field. we got an injury timeout here. Carver Scholar Athletes, we'll talk about them right now. Both are juniors. Cortland Warner and Jacoby Smith. Both of these fellas have 3.27. GPAs, Cortland Warner, 11th grader, receiver for the Rams. And his compadre, Jacoby Smith, another 11th grader. Number 22, that linebacker been blowing up some plays. Yes, hey, he has. He blows up his homework and some tests too, baby. And that's what he got. <laughs> hey, hey, and that's what's happening Do right it, there. man. Do it, fellas. Keep up the good work. And these have been brought to you by these outstanding players. T.C. Traditions Chicken. 
And let me tell you about Traditions Chicken. <coughs> it's so good, we didn't get any of it today. <laughs> <laughs> because the crew ate it all. <laughs> traditions. Now, we don't want to make that a tradition. <laughs> no, we don't want that to be a tradition next week, crew. <laughs> but it's all right. Ten minutes and 16 seconds. <laughs> 14 to 13 is the score. Carver puts it into play at the 23-yard line. Look at this, man. Defense. Handoff up the middle. Nope. There he is again. Only about two yards, though. Brings up a third down. There he is again, number 55. One thing, and more. one thing about this night, there will be some third down stats to look at. Oh, I'm sorry. That was not the Corey and Moore, number 55 for Winona. That is Edmund Jones again. Slipped up on that one. Oh, no worries, man. <laughs> no worries. Third and about 12. Ball at the 23-yard line. Carver. Twins left and right. Running back offset to the right of quarterback. He was moving forward a little bit. They didn't call it. Dumped it over to him a little high, a little far. Off his fingertips. Brings up a fourth down again. 